that was um, would take the weight of the teacher. This is in like year six. Yeah. So it was, you know, we were all making various little things. You know, you're there with the little the L shaped block thing that you put against the bench and the hacksaw to cut the, the, the bit of wood. Yeah, your little bench hook and yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The bench hook and then you're there with the glue gun and gluing these like cardboard tri triangles in to make this structure. And of course, half the people in the class were doing like these big, massive, empty squares that just, you know, <laughs> flopped over as soon as they, you know, stopped <laughs> holding them. Um, and a few of us had actually listened and done, you know, triangulation and things like that to actually make them solid. But there was like a, a sort of a fifty pence sized blob of hot glue that I'd like ended up on the on the workbench. And of course, being a sort of 10, 11 year old kid, I was like, "Is that hot?" Stuck my <laughs> enemy in the finger straight into this liquid blob of molten lava. <laughs> it's like a one of them. Yeah. The, the fingerprint has actually now grown back though. <laughs> Some twenty six years later. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what I was saying at, uh, at Maker Central about the Maker Jenga block. Like, if you picked mine up, the the mirrored one on the back of it, I'm pretty sure you'd have been able to unlock my phone with it because it super glue. I was holding it, and I was just like, oh, "Yeah, that's okay." Oh, hang on, that's now part of me. Um, yeah, you become one with the Jenga block. Yeah, it's like I've got to be in the tower. And part of <laughs> it's easy to remove just your block every time. <laughs> Hot glue is great, though, isn't it? I mean, let's face it. I mean, it's 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 got to be one of the best inventions for making. Yeah, that we're um, at work at the moment. We're looking at buying um, the molds and doing injection molding with it. Oh, um, but that's I cool. want to buy specific glue guns for that because I want to use glittery stuff. Um, and once you fed a glitter stick through a glue gun, that's it. everything's got <laughs> glitter on it after that. Yeah. Well, glitter right. is the kind of herpes of making, isn't it? Balasca's yeah. herpes, as it's uh, it's known in the industry. But yeah, the the Bosch glue pen is like one of my most grabbed tools, just nice. because it's like it, it takes like seven seconds to get hot from when you power it up, USB charged, and it's just really handy to just have on the desk and just glue bits of three D print together. And they're like twenty five thirty quid or something. Oh, that's not too bad. That's that's good yeah. price. I mean, Who's I think the Dean, who's the, who are these? Who's the injection molding company or, or device coming from? Um, it was from Technology Supplies. Um, okay. Yep. So I think they're now they've changed their name recently, and I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Um, yeah, they, it they used to be a company. So I think Technology Supplies are generally kind of a a sort of third party seller, but they used to be a company whose name changed at least once or twice. Based at, I, I want to say Middlesex. Oh, it's the University at Middlesex. You can say it if you want. No, oh, I can't remember what it is. Um, oh, I can't remember what it is. But they, they had lots of kind of technology, really cool technology sort of things. You know, they had the kind of the paper airplane launchers and yeah. the, the nose cone injections for, ro for rockets and all those kind of really fun things. And a lot of them were developed by them. I'm fairly sure it wasn't technology supplies. And so the it's the one that we've uh, we've worked with in in previous roles. I've worked with a company called um, Tillgear, um, and they do the Bloodhound racing. So you you apply for a kit. They come with like little foam blocks. You car you get the kids to carve it, um, and then they, they choose a day. They come down, put a rocket motor in the back of it, and try and like set a, a speed across the uh, across the car park. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's cool stuff. That is, yeah, I used to enjoy doing stuff like that. Yeah, all on like I a might. little wire that can snap at any yeah. any given moment. Um, but the kids absolutely love it. They'll just stand around, just like, can't stand there. It's not safe. They'll be like, oh, I'm, I'll, it's all right. I'll move in a minute. You know, that thing's going to go faster than you can move. Yeah. I used to love doing the, um, you know, where they got the, the, the sled and you do the um, strengthen in a cardboard car. Yeah. The experiment one. I, I used to love doing that. It's just so much fun. Just, Muller in these little cars. <laughs> it's just basically like a, a brick on wheels, wasn't it? To, yeah. Yes. I've still got. I've, I've still got uh, a launcher, a compressed air launcher, made from a copper pipe with a Schrader valve at one end, gas off sort of lever valve on in yeah. the other end, 
um and you could change because it used quick release the sort of the the quick release uh plumbing fittings mm -hmm. so you could either have a single one so you could use it with like a, a paper rocket uh did it did it in the garden once we lost the rocket over some <laughs> wait um or you can uh, sort of angle it down so it's locked based along the floor with a twin and then you have two little cars so you can kind of put different wheels on them so you can launch them at the same time side by side that was really oh, nice. quite cool yeah that sounds I good i want to make one of them now <laughs> Just thinking about, I was thinking, I want to make a potato cannon. Um, but, uh, <laughs> if you done, have you done the experiment with the uh, hairspray in the tube? Yes, um, I forgot what we were doing. We were doing something engineering. The, I'm going back about a, about back about a year now. We we're doing something in engineering, and I was as a technician, like the teacher was like, "Get me a kind of hairspray and a, a bit of tubing." So okay, I just hung around afterwards just to see what what was going down with it. I may still have uh, my Pringle can rocket because a can of hairspray, particularly if you cover it over the top and say rocket fuel on it, um, she's generally a good idea. So the kids don't try and do it with them, their mum's hairspray uh, or their dad's hairspray um, or significant others or, or kind of you know, sister's <laughs> hairspray, whatever. Just go to uh, and buy a. <laughs> yeah. But take a, take a Pringles can, other kind of hyperboloid crisps are available. Punch a hole in the metal end, and that's just the right size for like a barbecue lighter, the kind of the long stem lighters. Mm -hmm. So you can poke that through. A little squirt of rocket fuel, put the lid back on. You don't even need uh, gas in the, li the lighter; it sparks enough, and then it just pop and it flows off. But it makes a nice, nice kind of bang. Not too loud, <laughs> enough the kind of you know, primary school children will kind of go. Ooh! But enough for yeah, them to go again, again, again. Yeah, we used to have SciTech come into our school, um, and they do. They're up in Manchester way, um, and they come in and do like a, you know, like an assembly lesson with all that kind of stuff. You know, and putting passing like bits of dry ice around to have a look at, or getting a, an empty paint tin, putting a load of dry ice in, hammer the lid on it, and watch it buff up to the ceiling. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. That was loads and loads of fun. And then they did. Um, you could do like a, a week kind of secondment if you were kind of able to to do that um over at manchester grammar school and they would uh, just basically run it throughout the course of the day uh, over the course of a week so you'd get like loads of different experiments doing different things and um it was all stuff like you know using liquid nitrogen to make ice lollies with out, out of milkshake and all those kind of really really fun science experiments and then using like the corrugated plastic sheeting to make little wind powered cars and you know all those kind of measuring drag with uh, bikes and parachutes and all that kind of i just really really love that kind of stuff yeah we yeah. used to have a um science teacher uh, i'm going back to like when i was at school now um every year he'd, he'd go out onto like out onto the field um demonstrate a chip pan fire and why you don't put water onto it Yes, I love um, that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bumped into him. He, he still lives like local to us. Uh, bumped into him the other week. Um, and he's like, I can't do it anymore. The, but the, the amount of paperwork I have to do now to just do it with this Academy Trust, I, it's just not worth it. I'll just put a YouTube video on for them. Call the fire, get the fire brigade to come in and do it. A lot yeah. of fire brigades have their own demonstration of that. And then they just, yeah. it, it reduces the paperwork. Um, yeah. And there's still some because you, you've got externals coming in and whatever. But... No, it's it's going to be a lot less, isn't it? Because they, yeah, yeah, they've it's, got all the assessments and things. I've seen, I've seen fi fire brigade demonstrations because they do it at full scale, and they've often got a kind of like a, a mock up on the back of a trailer, mock up kitchen. Yeah, so it looks mm. very realistic, um, and the, just the, the pressure wave and the heat wave that hits you, it's yeah, it is. It's a scary one. If people haven't seen it, it's, yeah. it's worth. You start to see them at like yeah. agricultural fairs and, and the like, kind of, yeah, they'll, they'll put demos on. But it's, yeah, it's it's a scary one. Makes you think twice yeah. about kind of oil fires. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the, the kind of incidence of them, uh, the, not many people have chip pans anymore. And that was like the common fire, wasn't it? It was, a, it was a chip pan fire, you know, sort of back in, back in when we were growing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but yeah, the, the uh, there's been quite a few of them floating around on Reddit recently with, you know, kind of millennials and younger um, who you know, finally get in their own places and, and doing that kind of thing. But you always tend to see it around um, all the videos surface around Thanksgiving. Yeah. The, the deep fried turkey the, and the deep yeah. fried turkeys. Yeah. And they'll get them straight out the freezer and chuck them into like a big kind of 18 inch or two foot diameter pot full of oil or, you know, things like that. And wonder why it suddenly explodes all over the place. Well, your turkey ends up in next door's garden or something like that. <laughs> straight out. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, I do, I do like stuff. I, I miss stuff like that. I, I think I, I, I really quite like. I did look at once, look doing a, a master's in science communication. I'd, mm. I'd love to sort of do that. It's not viable now. It a is too expensive, and b I probably wouldn't wouldn't be allowed to. to health and safety grounds for my own health and safety. But it's, <laughs> it's there's so much fun stuff you can do with that. It, there's not enough of it mm. and more often than not it's it's being run by companies who are out to make a profit because i've seen i've seen some companies who do it who are, and some individuals who do it who are fantastic really are but then i've also seen a few which are kind of like we're paying how much for this i could do a better job in fact i would say some of my lessons are a better job at it than what this person is trying to do yeah been in that situation a few times. <laughs> that was my ideas. I was just studying the chat with the National Primary School to uh, do something for the rocket company that he works for. Um, I thought that was my ideas for him. Uh, yeah, well, on, have a chat, guys. It's my ideas. Getting all muffled there, Andy. Cool. Yeah. Oh. What's going on then? I don't know whether it's just yeah. me or not, but, but yeah. No, sorry, sorry, I thought it was just I, my ears. I was like, hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> right, my back. You're talking I, through a cloth. You're back to normal I, now. Ah. Yeah. Right, there's a bit of uh, a bit of streamyard correcting for your typing or something. Um, I yeah. will probably apologise as well because we are with Virgin Media, and, when it, and whenever it rains, we lose the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. It just it, it really it just stops. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, it's throwing it down. Where's my internet? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can just apologise because I'm drinking some gravity clamp cider. Not actually <laughs> gravity clamp, but everyone who was at Make a Central now knows it's gravity gra gravity clamp. Yeah, how many of you had? I, di, di, this this much, two oh, mouthfuls. That, that explains it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem. It's one of those Strap mega pint, mega pints. <laughs> We have got so these for those who regular listeners on the video. Um, the usual glasses that I drink from are, it's a polypropylene like festival cup, and it, they're amazing. My absolutely my favorite glasses ever. And I tried to find them. Um, we, we talked about this when Alex was on, but uh, I tried to find them in sensible enough quantities to fill a person's kitchen or a family's kitchen, rather. Um, and the, the quantities generally have at least three zeros after them that you can buy them in. So I kind of put the kibosh on that. But what I did find was a pack of 10 two-pint versions <laughs> <laughs> that are colossal. So the, the bottom is kind of the same kind of width as these. Um, but then it just like flares out when it gets to you know a couple of inches up and it just becomes this like vat that you drink from. <laughs> Sounds unstable. Yeah. Oh, it, absolutely! It's it's horrific, but they were big polypropylene cups. <laughs> it's a shame polypropylene is not more uh, responsive to kind of being home recycled because there's mm. a lot of polypropylene. I can't say it either. Waste, yeah. Yeah. No, I can't. I'm tired. It's, it's been a it's been a it's been a slow day. My brain's been slow. But it's yeah, been a warm weekend. I mean, HTP is yeah easy to reuse. I mean, yeah, brothers make can do it. Yeah, but oh. anyone can. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in fairness, anyone can because they have some wonderful videos. Well, this is it. They, they're instructional. They're instructional. Quality of their videos is fantastic. I mean, and uh, 
I mean, yeah, I, I mean if they're listening, they know we're joking. Because I've, I've I've been watching quite a few of their videos, and I've got a cupboard downstairs that's just full of milk bottle tops <laughs> to need to wash and sort out, and actually make a move on. But it's the it's the making the move on it. It's like I'm like, oh yeah, oh, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll I'll give that a go, and then I go off on a tangent, and three years later, I finally get back around to what I was doing in the first place. Strictly yeah. speaking, any thermoplastic should be recyclable in the same method. You just have to find the, the right heat range. Yeah. The problem is then figuring out which ones are thermoplastics and which ones are thermoset plastics, because those are the ones that you can't recycle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I kind of want to do the same kind of thing that they do, but with like 3D printing filament, even just to get, mm. you know, take my, my scrap PLA stuff or scrap PETG stuff and just turn it into like a machinable block. Um, you know, things like that would be. I think, I think, with, I mean, certainly with the kit, uh, you could probably do it with just the sort of the basic kit that they use, you know, the, uh, the yeah, gravel, absolutely, yeah, panini press type thing, uh, which we have, we have one of those, but I don't think the others in the house would be very happy if I was to start using the plastic, <laughs> even with kind of, you yeah, know, non stick paper, yeah, um, <laughs> everything tastes a little bit funny afterwards, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we have toasties at least once a week, so I, I don't really want to mess that up um mm. but I, I think it's certainly any kind of like you say any kind of you know, um thermoplastics should be fairly straightforward to do and i suspect the pla would be fairly straightforward to do it's finding yeah, yeah. that kind of find the right temperature range to melt it sufficiently that you can then mold it sufficiently yeah. and putting it into a suitable mold to use See, my, my problem would be with that. Um, I've got a box of failed prints down on the floor in front of me. Um, <clears throat> just looking at it, they're all black and grey, so I don't think I'd get a very interesting <laughs> machinable block. It'd just be like blob. <laughs> um, it, it all becomes yeah. dark brown anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, have to get, you have to start using some other colours and throw some of that in and just mix it well. Yeah, so yeah. you get that yeah. kind of... Or don't mix it well, just, just get like, a bit of marbling you, going. You see, that yes, all, I, yeah. all that I print is extraction cones in various sizes. That's, that's all that my <laughs> printer runs off. It's just, oh, what's Dean printing today? Oh, it's another cone. Um, I've gone very sort of nerdy with my stuff because most of it is either bright green or black, which is very kind of, you know, IT standard colors, you know, for the black and green for the old, you know, uh, VDUs and stuff. So I think I would. I'd have to because it's like black PLA and green PTG, so at least I could split them. Yeah, I'm mostly on, I'm on red at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I, like um, the the reason I go for grey is like I say, it's just a lot of it is just sort of like you, you don't see it. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of like okay, fine. I mean, like the extraction cone that I printed from my laser cutter, I've just wrapped it in aluminium tape to connect it to the, the tube. <laughs> um, so it just looks like a, a, B, a B movie space film or something. It's like a really low budget <laughs> version of Star Wars. <laughs> or so, like, something off Red Dwarf or something like that. Um, Good reference. Just tape it up. Classic British sci fi. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that that's the points of reference of either crap Star Wars. Or red dwarf. That's <laughs> all you need. <laughs> I mean, yeah. How does how does the budget of Red Dwarf compare to the budget of one Star Wars film? I probably comparable to the sliding words up the main screen yeah. at the very start. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or the or the, the the single kind of bigature of the Imperial Destroyer at the start, maybe. Yeah. This is the total of all the series. Three seconds worth of rotoscope in a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I think even, even just the noises are probably going to cost the same as the whole, you know, a single episode of Red Dwarf. <laughs> I love it. There's uh, a bit of Red Dwarf nerdy trivia. There's um, one of the costume people on the show is called uh, Donna Destefano, I think, and um, she had to stand in for Kachansky on a on a particular episode because. Uh, I forget the actress was at the time, um, but basically, it like got to the end of the day, and they went, "Oh shit, we've forgotten the other um, the other scene that we need to fill in." So there's a particular scene where uh, she's wearing this big, massive, floppy hat, kind of snuggled into the side of Lister, and it's it's not the Chansky you thought it was. It's not the one from <laughs> earlier in the episode. 
<laughs> T, T with Tyler in the chat says Red Dwarf was £250,000 per episode. That's, that's more than I was expecting it to be. Is that, yeah. Is yeah. that a new? Thank you, the wages. Because, yeah, because yeah, 250 grand back in 88 would have been a fair bit of money. A fair bit of money for a sort of backwater BBC sci fi thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 61 yeah. episodes. Was... Unfortunately, I've seen <laughs> all of them many, 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 many times. <laughs> I haven't seen them all, I think. I can't remember when I stopped watching. I started watching from the start, and I, I watched the first, some of the series, mm. but I don't think I watched them all. I, think I gave up at some point. It's probably when I went off to, if, probably when I went off to university or something. I, I remember watching Series 8 when it was on TV. Um, it was the first, first opportunity I'd got to watch them live as they were aired. Um, but I mean, yeah, we swapped. So, on. so for me, it would have been sort of probably say about ninety-five. My dad used to work a, a two till ten shift, um, so he'd, he'd go to. He'd, I'd see him in the morning before I went to school, and I'd, I'd stay up to to see him when he came home from work. Um, mm -hmm. Like probably pushing the bedtime for like a six-year-old child, but see my dad. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, I remember just sitting watching red dwarf waiting trying to keep myself awake and then obviously i got all the reruns on dave a few years ago mm. so it's, it's sort of like it's that sort of thing when you, you're watching an episode and you're like oh this is new to me and then all of a sudden you're like oh actually i remember that bit from when i was when i was younger and then you kind of get the joke because you're a little bit older <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i can quite a lot, a lot of six year old you wouldn't get yeah no no yeah yeah definitely not yeah as a six year old it was just like program where people were in space shooting lasers at aliens and things like that so with it with a guy with a square head <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i think i i feel that's fair and you i, I mean i've i've been watching um catching up with the classic doctor who's this last sort of well, probably two years now just kind of just 18 months just kind of going through them and there's every now and again i see something i think i remember that but I haven't really got a good memory of what it was, even though I kind of watched some of the kids because he was like, yeah, okay, yeah, four, five, six, seven year at the time. And it's like, yeah, nope, don't remember that. Remember the scary yeah. things. I can remember, <laughs> yeah, one of my kind of early vivid memories is hiding behind a sofa because there's some, yeah, alien, Dalek, Cybermen, whatever. I can't even remember what it, villain it was, but yeah. Gonna, about to kill the doctor or or the like but then we do yeah we don't remember those kind of yeah we don't remember the kind of the, the little bits or the i mean if you re-watch them i mean it's, it's quite interesting actually watching some of the early doctor who's how they kind of sort of sort of the uh the anti-feminist there's sort of sexist comments from one character and mm. somebody else will go well, why, why can't i do that yeah just because i'm a woman and it's it's good to see that that was the case. It's a shame that it's still stuff that has to happen today. But yeah, yeah. it's the same with the Star Trek and things, wasn't it? You know, the, the original Star Trek was was hugely progressive. You know, especially for for the time and for the age. Um, you know, it was uh, those kind yeah. of sci-fi shows have, have always kind of been trendsetters. It's like you know, they kind of they, yeah. that hope for future for future life. Yeah, I think uh, the early effects was like the the old Tomb Raider games as well, having a female lead character and, mm. and things like that, like a, a strong female role model in in the computer games industry. Like, I know they technically said it started with Miss Pac Man, but like, and yeah, and then like Metroid with Samus. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and there's loads of these sort of examples of them, which is uh, it's still not enough, but yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, like, yeah, you two are probably too young to remember things like Blake Seven and the, sort of the yeah. some of the. I mean, the, the the I was quite interesting actually. I think this probably almost relates back to some of my early sort of making things because they, like Blue Peter would do yeah. Like, oh, let's make a one of the transporter wristbands from Blake Seven out of a 
Robinson's squash bottle because they had just happened to have the right size sort of banding because it kind of went in and out. And each band was just the right size for kind of you know, going over a wrist of a certainly a, a young person. And you know, just kind of you know, seeing stuff and thinking, hang on, I reckon that that's that's a yeah, a thing, a day to day thing. You can kind of go, yeah, you kind of work out how that was made, you know, like the mm. Daleks. Yeah, you know, it's like it was a, originally it was a plunger on the front, it's like, yeah, much yeah. more sophisticated yeah. nowadays, but. I just love that idea of that we can see how things are made. And, and I that... think that's sort of a callback to why I love the Back to the Future film so much. Because if you look at the DeLorean, there's parts of it, like the Mr. Fusion mm -hmm. on the back, it's just a Phillips coffee grinder. Um, <laughs> there's just so many parts of that car that you can say, oh, hang on, I know what that is. I, I can get well, one I mean, of those off eBay. the whole thing with, with, with prop making as was. You know, it's, it's whatever you had available in the local shops you know i said before about the um uh the the big massive red clamps that hold the stargate in uh in stargate sg1 were uh industrial mop bucket grips to to squeeze the mops it just happened to be the right size and the right shape and looked vaguely cool <laughs> so they sprayed them red and stuck them up in the air you know <laughs> things like that it's quite a, a fun game for people like the, the replica props for them yeah, Michael. Um, to try and work out which which thing from, you know was was used in which prop. Yeah, I spent many hours on that forum. Um, just yeah. like you say, oh, just cool. looking, trying to find out what what that bit of that sort of thing was. Yeah. Oh no, they, this screw was from this this model of yeah. thing that they got from that from because it happened to be that they made this down the road from there. You know, it's the super super nerdy conversations. And then you get yeah. Situations like yeah, try and buy a Graflex uh, flash gun nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You, you, a you a you can't, and B if you can find one, it's going to be so expensive because the, and the, even... all the prop makers who want it to make the, the original oh. Luke Skywalker um, saber. Even yeah. the um, the old calculator, the, the the bubble screens that are on the side of the lightsaber, even just the little bit of plastic goes for like a ridiculous amount online at the moment. I used to have one of those calculators. <laughs> <laughs> if only if only you knew. <laughs> what was yeah. Going? Yeah. But then if, if if I had that kind of sort of future site then yeah I'd be very rich. <laughs> yeah but would you though yeah, because I'd, you'd probably no, just, just be a hoarder. Yeah I'd just be a hoarder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you mean would be the yeah. reason why everyone else is very rich? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny the other day though. The uh, May for Makers Day Fourteen um, was there's time travel, and for mine, I, I put up photos from Maker Central 2018. I was wearing my Back to the Future T-shirt. <laughs> it was like as if I knew, as if I knew this day was coming. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been doing that this year. I, I, like last year, I did a. Or the year before, I just did one at the end of the did a video at the end of the month, just going through the prompts. Mm. Yeah, it's been interesting to see some people's kind of take on that. Yeah, definitely. If anyone's not familiar, Mayfair Makers, um, Priscilla and Luke Smith do an annual have for about three years now, two or three years. Uh, right. May for Makers, there's a series of prompts each day for May over on Instagram. And you can do as many as you want or do it every day, do, and do every other, whatever. It doesn't really matter. There's no sort of prize to it. It's just a bit of a, an interesting challenge to introduce people to other people and help each other, other makers find other makers. And it's a bit of fun. It's worth yeah, sort it's of like checking out. Instagram challenge set, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd been saying that I was. I tried to do it last year. Got three days into it and then lost track of it. And but I, I made a promise to myself that this year I want to try and actually complete something. Um, <laughs> get something to even if it's just Instagram posts. I want to get something finished this year, as opposed to bikes and guitars and. <laughs> that's just it's, that's that's kind of like, that's the same though. I'm, I've been doing that for a while. I want to do something. <laughs> 
You say that, I'm just looking over there now. I've got three cigar, cigar box guitars, the one I did for Vectric, <coughs> and a, a license plate guitar that are in various oh, nice. f- various states of playability. <laughs> but <laughs> That's their own states, not your ability to play them. No, it's both. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, I, think the, I think it'd be good to have these challenges, though. I think it's... It, I mean, I find I've I've struggled this month with my drawing because I've not had a set of prompts to work from. I at the start mm. of the month I thought, oh, I I'm, I've got time to find some prompts. I've got some time to find. I'd, I'd seen the ones because uh, I'm posting a group called Kicking the Creatives, which is an art group, and I didn't like. I'd, I'd seen their monthly prompts and I didn't like them. I didn't think it would suit the style of drawing I'm doing. I thought, I'll, I'll look somewhere else. Well, I never did. And it's kind of like each day, I'm just like, oh, what can I draw today? What can I draw today? Some days it's been easy. Yeah. It, some days it's just like, right, that, that's the thing for today. Or there's a word that comes up multiple times a day that doesn't normally kind of come up. And you kind of think, okay, that's my word for today. But it's like, it's like today, I was like, what am I going to draw? I just couldn't think of what I was going to draw. I just been it. Yeah. That, what I did eventually draw took less than five minutes including the fact that i made a mistake but it was just like an hour hour and a half two hours trying to think of something to actually do so having a right. set of prompt having a set of prompts i find can be yeah it, it takes away some of the thinking yeah it takes away the hard bit of the thinking so then you've kind of just go well, what, what what can i do to deliver to that phrase mm. Well, some of the phrases, some of the ones on Maker Makers are really quite interesting. The one that sort of stands out, I can't remember when it, if it's been or if it's going to go, is the kind of Maker's Crush. That's going to be an interesting one to see what people put for that, because that can be interpreted <laughs> in so many different ways. Yeah, so see if you're on it, you mean? Well, I, I would assume so, but yeah. Don't, don't it's whether anyone wants other people. Yeah, it's whether anyone <laughs> wants to, uh, you know. Swell your ego too much or not? Well, there is that. But yeah, do people go down the line of because if the word crush, you tend to think of either it's that kind of the physical, mechanical idea of something being crushed. So do you go mm. down that line? Or then the it kind of when you talk about a crush with a person, you tend to be thinking about there's, kind of there's lots know, of scope for cringe yeah. cringeworthy posts, isn't there? Yeah. So I'm just waiting to see what uh, weird tools. <clears throat> Weird tools people have got crushes on. <laughs> this is my uh, this is my my, my making crush. This Lincoln electric welder, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that. Other well, welding brands are available. <laughs> <laughs> but if Lincoln wants to sponsor us, that's that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They do some damn good stuff. It it, it it's interesting though. It, you know, actually, we do sort of pick on particular tools as well. Because I mean, yeah. you've, I mean, Dean, just yeah, using that as a segue, you do have a very high standard of work with CNC. And yeah. You've been um, working so with Usenet for a few of, years. Yeah. yeah uh, so I worked with Usenet, um, did a six month term with those guys. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, they still support me now. If I, if I share something, they'll, they'll share it again on their, on their mm. channels. Um, and and Vectric, who, to be honest, after meeting them at Maker Central, they're an amazing bunch of people. Um, yeah, they really are. Really, really community driven. Um, they've just shared one of my projects, so I did a plywood guitar with them, um, and that's a free. That's now one of their free demo um, projects. So if if you've got a CNC machine, you want to try Vectric, you can go and make that guitar. Mm. We'll put a link to that in the, the show notes so people yeah, can definitely. Sort of dive onto that. I must admit, it was it was going to be a YouTube video, um, and then I got carried away with the process of making and <laughs> set the phone up and didn't really record everything. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably, I, I'm planning on revisiting that one again, um, maybe out of hardwood rather than plywood. Uh, just be nice. Pu- Purely because of the the neck, I had a few issues with the neck. The neck was a little bit too flexible, so I had to end up putting a carbon fiber support down the middle of it. Um, mm. But I think with a bit of maybe with a bit of ash, it should be all right. 
Yeah, I did that with the um I did a 3D printed violin for my daughter. Um that that was something that was really, really smart idea that they did because they used the same thing of a um it was designed around having a five hundred mil carbon fiber rod that just slid straight through the neck and through the body into a hollow at the bottom. And that it's surprising just how much like an eight mil carbon fiber yeah. rod just had so much rigidity and support. Yeah, this that's in this. It's a six mil. Um, I'm just looking at it now. Six mil square section of carbon carbon fiber rod. Uh, oh, it's nice. about So it's about six hundred mil long. Um, so it's just literally from the top of the neck. It it goes into the hollow part of the body at the bottom just to give it that little bit more um, reinforcement. I guess it's cool. square section that's a lot easier to install. Okay. Yeah. Straight. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just six mil wrapped a bit in the CNC machine, one straight line, and it just drops, drops straight in. Yeah, that's smart. So is, is all your stuff done? Is it all designed in two D then? So stuff like the bike, um, is that all? So the bike was all done in two D. Um, the guitar that I've just put out, that is a bit of three D on the back, so that is a bit of two sided machining. Um, normally, if I'm building a guitar for myself, I'll CNC the neck out and then I'll shape it by hand. But mm. after speaking with Tim Sway at Maker Central, he's, he's told me a few of his ideas and how he does it. And I've been playing around with it over the last week, and I think I'm going to start doing more 3D in in ah, cool. as well. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. But it's got a really, it's got a really good STL import feature as well. So if you if you've got something that you've done previously, say like on Fusion, you can mm. import that in, and the the trace on it, um, it will give you a really really accurate vector trace. Around the STL. Ooh. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good bit of kit. Mm. Yeah, yeah it does yeah. have that. One day when we I've got, we move house and I've got a bigger workshop, I think it's definitely a full size CNC. After, well, I may say full size, a good size hobby CNC like that that will be. Yeah, definitely. I'd love one of those on there. Maslow CNCs like Tim's got. The yeah, hanging hanging cables. I think it's, it's Keith, Keith Decent's got one of those as well, hasn't he? He's been doing, doing he? a bit on on his. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I've seen him on his Instagram stories doing a few bits and pieces. Um, I'm sure he did a, an expanded foam sign for a, a vinyl store. Oh, nice! Um, but that was all done on the Maslow, I think. Mm. There was a um, there's a website dedicated to Maslow CNC designs, and there's a there's a, a discussion i'd seen a while back about doing a quarter size one so 600 by 1200 um using a dremel as a as the as the router piece so just doing the super small version it's then kind of you know hobby size cnc but yeah done as a maslow so it's all hung vertically i think that'd be a really cool project to do. yeah they do a <laughs> um a, di a diode laser attachment for them as well now so you can put your diode laser on it and have it as like your full <laughs> eight by four like the old um, pan panther drawing machines, you know, ones that are yeah, around yes. line chains. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> I think it. there, was, there was a pen plotter Maslow that you just like hung on your wall and then it would do your drawings for you on your wall. Quite a cool plan. Yeah. Uh, Ma the Michelangelo, I think it was. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, because I tried to make my own, didn't I? I uh, 3D printed all the parts, and that was another project that went by the wayside. <laughs> and I realised I looked around in the workshop, and I was like, "I've not got enough room for this." <laughs> so it's it's still under it's underneath my CNC machine in a box. Um, and when I, when I sort this room out, it'll probably go on the wall in here somewhere. So cool. it, it will it will be resurrected. Because to do it with a like a whiteboard, just have yeah. it so that you know you come in in the morning and it'll. It, draws the daily drawing on the on the whiteboard for you. <laughs> Wipe your project list out. <laughs> wipes, it, wipes it clean at the end of the day and then kind of just yeah, it, every morning. Yeah. I, I'd love to if you've seen the like the um the little con, a computer control clock. It's basically like oh, yeah, it's got like um, a little arm that wipes it off every it writes the number yeah, so it just got wipe it out and then it'll put it back. Writes yeah. the number, wipes it off, writes the number, wipes it off. <laughs> Genius. Do you ever see the giant? Do you ever see the one? I think it was something like a train station, where it was done. Um, it was done by projection, but essentially they recorded somebody uh, 
there's like a, a, a translucent clock face, huge clock face, kind of the yeah, two meter tall kind of clock face. And this person kind of paints in the sort of time and then wipes it and then paints the next minute and then, nice. they, and then they just project the rest around. Just, yeah, I think that was uh, was doing the rounds on Reddit a few a few weeks ago. That was yeah, I saw that one. I was like, oh, that's actually that's genius. That is, but it's like you say, it's just a loop of of somebody paint, painting it on. It's like yeah. I think it's it's projected internally to make it yes. look like from the outside that he's actually so you, in the clock. Yeah, painting. so you're seeing like a shadow, yeah, yeah. of the person working. Oh, nice. It's really cool. It's, there's some clever folk out there to come up with these sort of things, and then sort of yeah. deliver on them. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to i'd like to try the sort of pen plotter sort of style of thing some yeah like um is it is it um dan cat he's got yes those, he's, dan cat. yeah he's yeah. yeah he's generated stuff is amazing i think you were the one yeah. who turned me on to that and uh, i was like oh yeah i'll check that out went on his instagram and yeah. it's just the stuff he's doing is absolutely mind-blowing let's get yeah. me back into get me back into fountain pens as well yeah I, I'm just waiting for these I'm biograph sort of stuff. I'm waiting for this biro to run out and then sort of my biro runs out. I'm, I'm thinking of not using a biro again and just digging out well, one of the fountain pens. I can categorically say that this uh, this Zebra Z quad pen that I've been playing around with for the last 40 minutes or 45 minutes is uh, utterly rubbish. So if you had one of those, I would just suggest putting it in the bin. Uh, <laughs> It did go back together, but now it doesn't function properly because I didn't put it back together properly. But all the bits did go back in it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not in the right order. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it, it pops out, but then doesn't pop back in. So I've, I've, I've sprung in the wrong place. Yeah, or a catch. You might find that the, there's a polyrotary catch. It's probably not completely symmetrical. No, it's, it's four slot pins. Um, it's just me reassembling it and putting the four springs the wrong side of the. Uh, it's like a collar that sits in the middle. Yeah, it's it's just my incompetence of putting it back together wrong. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was I was completely expecting to that. So Uznest sent me the uh, upgrades for my my workbeat to turn it into the Z plus one, which is the the new one they brought yeah. out. So the duet's now in the little case at the back. It's got um, thrust bearings on the ends, and you can tension tension the rods to get um, rid of. It doesn't really affect it on my machine because it's one of the smaller ones, but on the big ones, you can tension your lead screw um, to take out some of the the whipping up and down in it. And I was like, I did it all, and I was fretting for like four days that I'd done it wrong, and I was like, "Well, I'm going to find out by running it." Um, yeah. But went went fine. But I was That's I was good. convinced that I, I was convinced that I'd made a mistake. And I couldn't, I was looking at it and I was looking at the instructions. I was like, I can't work out where, but I've made a mistake somewhere. But you have a handful of parts left over as well. Yeah. 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 It's because you take, because what they've done is they've replaced all the screws. So the screws used to be um, like, they were black screws, but they were only coated black. Um, mm. It wasn't done through like chemical reactions or anything. And the new ones are all stainless steel. So you're taking these old ones out and putting the new ones in. And then you're looking at your hand, like you just said, you've got 10 screws. And you're like, hang on yeah. a minute. <laughs> Um, because they've replaced them all with new ones. Of course, yeah. It's like one of my uh, one of my three D printers. I bought an upgrade for it as I bought the printer. Um, it's just just a, like a cartridge replacement for the whole hot end um, and extruder. But the printer's working far too well as it is, so I haven't because it's like a really ridiculously reliable printer i don't want to dismantle a fully working you know it's doing all the things properly yeah so then try and retrofit an upgrade because knowing my luck i'll just make it worse and end up yeah, buying that's... a replacement printer <laughs> uh, i have got to admit that the uh, the upgrades for the cnc they did sit in the in the kitchen for about a month um because i had a job on and i didn't want to take the machine apart in the middle of a job yeah and then find out that could, i was cutting slightly less accurate or slightly more accurate than my other other ones and nothing would yeah end especially up. if you're halfway through the job as well yeah yeah it's like picking up another tape measure isn't it it's yeah fatal flaw yeah. i kind of wish using this would go down the kind of yeah something like the 3018s type size and do one of those because that'd yeah. be something that yeah could fit it'd be nice to support a british company rather yeah. than 
is supporting sort of essentially only Chinese companies to for that size of machine. Yeah, I think like I said, there is a definite gap in the market for that size of machine. Um, that's produced maybe, like you say, maybe in Britain, even in Europe, um, something where you, you can get hold of support um, if you need yeah. them. It's, well, that, it needs to sit kind of in between though, wouldn't it? Because part of the reason for getting something like one of those 38 things is the fact that when it breaks, you just put it in the bin and buy another one. Yeah. You know. They are so cheap. It's almost like, is it Stepcraft that are doing the yeah. kind of... Uh, it's a, essentially only what, half a meter by half a meter and two sort of fairly thick mm -hmm. aluminium plates either side or steel plates either side with the, the gantry across you've got, that. You've got one finny who are, or one finity who are the ones that are running it on like a, a aluminium aluminium so they're running it on like a tube. Um so it looks mm. like two pieces of pipe on your top, and then you've got Stepcraft who are doing the one where the bottom comes out and it's got a vacuum bed so you can stick it to the wall, engrave in your wall if you want, it'll stick to the floor. You can you can pretty, nice. pretty much put it anywhere. Um and then like the, the the demo that they're using for it, it's cutting into a concrete floor. Um <laughs> and putting a aluminium inlay into the concrete floor. Wow. Wow. So it's like all the parts were made on that machine. So the aluminium inlay's been made on that machine. It's been put on the floor, cuts the concrete and it just slots straight in. Wow. There you go, there's my there's my maker crush, Stepcraft. <laughs> <laughs> just gave that one away that's for, that's phenomenal it's 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 amazing to see i mean being at maker central and seeing what your, yourself i mean certainly when i visited the usenes stand which is one of the few stands that i actually got to specifically because i wanted to see the the balance bike that you've yeah. you made and had there and yeah everyone was staring at that bike yeah, mm -hmm. when I was chatting to them, they were saying, "Yeah, that bike is the it was the star of the show." Yeah, for them, more people were looking at that than actually at the CNC. That really yeah. shocked me. That did um, how well received that was. Um, you might be surprised to learn it didn't shock us like in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it completely threw me uh, as soon as I walked in with it. Like uh, I was, I was walking in through those weird metal detector things, which didn't mm -hmm. seem to beep on me only when I had an empty bag. So it was like. <laughs> I, I was, when we went to the, the Sunday morning when we were leaving, um, we went over to the airport to get those Percy Peaks for Al from Al's Hack Shack. Mm. Um, and I walked to the, the security booth, but it didn't go off. I had a spoke shave and a draw knife in my bag. Um, and then I went back to the hotel. And I, I, I said to Catherine, before we go, I'm going to run back in and go to Subway. So my bag was completely empty because I was going to put the sand sandwiches in it. Um, mm. And it beeped on me and they did the bag search on my empty bag. Yeah, mm. like... 20 minutes ago, I just walked into an airport with a bag full of tools. <laughs> it's just, all right. okay. just carry on, carry on. It's all right. It's fine. I don't know what the hell they were detecting because we walked through with loom parts, we walked through with tools and all sorts of stuff. And they just, yeah, it didn't do yeah, anything. The first time I went through, I was carrying, carrying the bike under my arm, and all the security guys were like, whoa, look at that. And then and that kind of made <laughs> me realize maybe I've made something that's that's okay. Um, that was That was the turning point for me. I, th I think I actually only saw two things on that stand, and I basically like walked up to it to your bike, and then saw the caffeine logo or the, the caffeine symbol on the on the shelf, and they're the only two things I've got any memory of seeing there. Yeah, it was a very nice chess set. Was yeah, it's a very nice chess set tucked away. There was some other nice stuff. There was some some nice stuff also on the um, Carfco Carfco stand. Up towards yeah. near the mm. uh, the forge area, they had some nice stuff. Uh, yeah, so the, the cutting boards that they had on there with the inlays on were really nice. Um, yeah, and uh, James from James Dean Designs. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yes. Yeah, he's he had some nice work there. Too, because he's doing quite a lot of, of like three D carving, isn't he? Yeah. Which yeah. Is, absolutely phenomenal it's one thing that i've got to try and get my head around this year uh it's just inlay work i mean i've done i've done basic inlays so like um names on top of guitars but i want to do the sort of the multi multicolored so different species of wood inlays on on fretboards um but it's just sort of it's the order of operations mm. yeah so you have to you have to kind of work backwards um, to be able to to get the way that you want it to come out. 
it's it's fascinating seeing stuff like that. I, yeah, I think for for me, there's the one thing I've a, a project I've wanted to do for a long time is to make um, topographical maps. So almost like yeah. I mean I haven't got the space to display that, so I don't know why I'd want to do it. It's sort of thing when I was sort of when I was working, it's kind of thing. Yeah, I could do that and give it to the geography department. But yeah, you know, when you sort of literally take something like an ordnance survey map and turn that into a three D model of the same scale as the ordnance survey map. Yeah. Mm. I was three D printed. Um, yeah. I could. There's a, a load of free files on the uh, on the NASA on the NASA website. So there's like um, scans of the moon and, and things like that that you can download as yeah. STL, 3D print it or CNC. But the, it's just it's like you just say scale. It's it's not quite to scale. Um, obviously, because the different depths of your craters and stuff like that. Yeah. When it's like a, a hundred mil by hundred mil block, it's not going to look quite right. Yeah, I, f- I found that I d- for a while. I I was using a. Uh... Uh, some software whose name I can't remember now. Essentially, it was it was mapping software. So it had the Ordnance Survey uh, maps, one hundred fifty thousand and one to twenty five thousand scales, and it was you could use it for planning kind of routes for things like the Duke of Edinburgh Ward, and that was really useful. It would give you route cards and whatever. But you could also do fly throughs of the um, sort of the, 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 the walk that you, you planned. And it was it was nice to be able to see you could see sort of uh, gradient profiles so you could see kind of you know, what your day's walking was going to be like but the fly throughs you had the ability to exaggerate the, the the vertical scale and you actually needed to do that because quite often it was if you just let it choose its kind of to scale so you yeah know, you know one meter up one meter across one meter the same sort of proportions it would it would not actually give you a, a good impression of what the hills were actually like, but if you, yeah. if you doubled it or tripled it, you'd actually kind of get a slightly exaggerated, of course, because it's exactly what you're doing. But you'd get that kind of better idea of the shapes of the hills or where you're sort of walking down valleys or whatever. And it it, it, was, it was cool software. Yeah, it'd be nice to see that in three D live. Models. One of the other one of the other features that I really like about Vectric is something similar to that. So with with Aspire, when you import your STL, you can say your start height and your finish height, and it'll scale it appropriate to what to what your piece you've got. Um, oh, that's cool. So like, say if I'm if I'm carving out of a fifty mil block of oak, I can say that that's fifty mil. I want my model to start at this position and end at this position, and it'll work out the scale on the z-axis itself. To, to make it stay in proportion with like your X and Y, which is just really, Mary really, Donna. really useful um, for doing a lot of like reliefs and stuff like that. So like the uh, the mallet that I, I don't know if you, if you may see, it, but the mallet that I made for Steve Moonshine Metalworks, um, yeah, that was because because basically I imported from Thingiverse an STL of a, the top of a sledgehammer, uh, split it in half in a spire and. Because because there's a slicing feature, so you can split it and then put them next to each other, and then it worked out the depth of his logo itself based on the height <laughs> of, of what I what the pin for the mallet. It's That's clever, so it's clever, so is it? There, are, I mean, again, there's, there's some really clever people out there, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, to be able to produce that. Yeah. Never mind. To, I mean, driving a CNC is is one thing, but actually producing the software to use the CNC to do that. Yeah, I mean, chatting to them as well. They're all makers, so that they're, they're all yeah like, heavily focused around what they do. But even like the, even the web developer that I was chatting to, he was like, "Yeah, I make this, this, and this as well." This is obviously only because like he's got access to the machines at Vectric, but he makes at home as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I think that's. I know we're sort of getting very very much down the Vectric or Olson route, but they genuinely are like really interesting and interested people as well yeah yeah which i think is, is why it's such a big difference yeah um, and they're yeah. community minded they're, i mean yeah they're, they're definitely community minded they're interested Absolutely, in making yeah. community obviously they're a business and they're trying to make money and, and yeah they have to kind of appeal to the market but if you look at the way some other companies work mm-hmm. yeah they they don't think about the community in that way they don't give back 
yes, they're trying to earn money, but it, it's it's how you go about doing that. I don't, I don't think anyone minds anyone wanting to make a, a fair living, making a fair, mm. even a fair profit. But yeah, if you're doing that by being kind to people and, and reaching out to people and helping build people up, I think that's a, I think that's a really, it's a, it's a, I can't think of the right adjective, but it's an, it's an honorable way of about doing business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of the right word either, but you, you're doing right by your punters, aren't you? Yeah. Which I suppose in terms generates more, more business home because people like me are going to say Vectrica, <laughs> Vectrica or something. It, gener but, it generates, good, it generates goodwill. I mean, they're making a good product, yeah. but they're generating goodwill too. Yeah, there are, are companies that make good products, but they don't necessarily go about the goodwill side of things, or they may only kind of try and target their goodwill at a certain portion of their, um, sort of their, their customer base, and maybe push other people out. Yeah, agreed. I think I think that from I think so, I think learning to drive a CNC is definitely something that's on my kind of list of things to do. It's not something I've ever done. I've I've, not, I've had slight access to CNCs in the past, but I've never really sort of had the time to build enough skills and I've always relied on other people to kind of do the goods and produce it. So, well, if you're ever down this way again. Well, up this way, up, up this way. Um, feel free, <laughs> feel free. Just drop me a message. Come and can have a couple of hours in the workshop. Have a little play on the new laser as well. Mm. Yes, because you've gone down when, you've, when you've, it's you've, when it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very new, isn't it? I mean, you've you've only had that a fairly short period of time, haven't you? Yeah. So I brought it in January, and a few things happened in January that meant that I, I, I didn't get a chance to install it in the workshop till till like march time um and then came around to march and i was like oh hang on it's it's maker central at the end of this mm -hmm. month i haven't done anything that i needed to do for maker central um so that kind of went into overdrive and then when i tried to fire it up the other day it's stuck on putting out 50 percent power um but support team at arm tech they're, they're brilliant um, I sent them an email explaining the issue and they were like, try this, this, and this, sent them a few videos. And within, so within two days, they'd cracked the problem. Um, so new power supply should be with me tomorrow morning and then we should be good to go on that one. Cool. Cause that's, I mean, a lot of people think home lasers, they think kind of, or lasers at home, they're generally thinking kind of either the K40 lasers. style or the yeah. Glowforge style but you've you've gone a bit bigger than that haven't you? yeah so i've gone 600 by 400 um that's the biggest i could get into my space 60 watt um co2 um mm. when it when the power supply was okay i was cutting through three mil acrylic at 20 mil per second at 20 percent power one pass so nice. it should sp it should speed me up a little bit on things that i'm doing mm, um definitely I'm, I'm kind of hoping that once I'm all happy with it, I can work out the steps per millimeter on the CNC machine, work out the steps on the laser and try and get them in the same ballpark of accuracy to get them working together. Um, so maybe starting something on the CNC and then saying, oh, I need this doing for this project. Let's do it on the laser because I know that it'll be as, as accurate as that mm. um, without too much messing around. Maybe you'd be able to get away with... Oh, yeah. So maybe lasering something out as an inlay, uh, but I suppose it's going to be as broad as it's long, isn't it? Unless you're trying to do yeah. something very fine. Yeah. But, mm. So I did the other day uh, laser out a prototype as a fretboard and filled it with epoxy. Um, like I said, I know that the, the laser's not working perfectly, but it's still good enough to give me quite deep engraving on on certain things. Yeah. Um, so I just just sort of like play with the speed to like slow it down a little bit to make it a bit deeper, and then filled it with white epoxy. Um, which is still in the garage at the moment. I'm going to sand it all back tomorrow and see how it goes. Yeah, Sounds fun. I think I think for me, a laser's higher up on the kind of priority list of purchases than yeah. a, a CNC. 
Mm. Shift, I think it's, I think the, it's got more versatility for me. Yeah, for the things yeah, that so I want to make. Like you can you can put leather in it. Um, you can cut paper. Whereas with the CNC, it's very much sort of like wood. I know you can get drag knives and things like that uh, for your CNCs, but like you just said it's, it, it opens a few more doors in terms of versatility, versatility um, and, yeah. and what's possible. Yeah, because for, for me, but the ideas I've got are things like you know being able to do embossed or debossed book covers. And I mean, I could do that on something like a, a cricket maker, but I, I don't like the fact that with particularly with cricket, as opposed to maybe silhouette, you've got the tie-in to yeah internet mm-hmm. connection and DRM controlled software. Whereas with a laser, you, there are options for non DRM controlled software and no internet connections. <laughs> Off the shelf open source software yeah yeah so you've got you so see you've got cnc you've got laser you've got 3d papers yep. you've got the mention any other yep. sort of digital tech on the so, sort of wish list so catherine's got the cry cup maker and everything that you've just said is exactly what i think is wrong with it um <laughs> it's a fantastic bit of kit uh i just don't like the software don't like the fact that everything's tied into cry cut um mm. but yeah, so the software, it really infuriates me because what I do is I, I design my stuff for it in um, Inkscape and then mm-hmm. I'll email it across to Catherine and she'll cut it out on the machine because you have to attach everything to a canvas. Um, sometimes course, yeah. like with things that, like like my logo, if you want to try and cut that out, it separates the insert parts and puts them next to it. Um, so it isn't as <laughs> one. So you need, to, you need to attach it to a canvas um, and it's in centimeters. I work in millimeters, so I bring it through. Yeah. It's like it's like ten by ten. No, that's supposed to be hundred by hundred. Why is it so small? And then you resize it, and then you realize when you cut it that it's in centimeters. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I hate working in centimeters. Just it, Americans trying to do metric. Just, it's just yeah. wrong. To where where it's, I used to work, schools, though, isn't it? Where I used to work, uh, some of the kids tried to catch me out once, so they gave me their measurements for a piece of wood they wanted. They gave me in inches. The scale on the table saw so was in inches, so I was just like, okay, cool. <laughs> I haven't even got to get tape measure right now. Just go straight to that, and they, there you go. But it's brilliant. Yeah, when, when I told them, they were like, oh, no. It's in sixth form. Um, I had quite a good old like, people with these kids. Yeah, these kids, these are the sort of kids, like, you could you could have a chat to them. They, they were good kids. Um, mm. And then when they were leaving, they thought, "Oh, we'll just play a practical joke on him." And obviously, it kind of backfired because it was like, <laughs> it gave it to them. They're like, "You did that quicker than when we give it you in millimeters." I was like, "Yeah, come look, look at this." <laughs> yeah, not not a fan of centimeters. It just it, I can see why they're used, and I can see why it's taught in schools, but it's just it's not useful no for, for anything uh, anything big or small that's that's all i tend to work what, what was worse i think than um centimeters is when you start talking about volumes and you start talking about uh decimeters cubed and mm-hmm. even even cc's yeah give me give me milliliters yeah give me I liters yeah. don't give me don't give me decimeters cubed. Yeah. <laughs> it's when you, you start looking at things like um, I, I was looking into like blood uh, glucose levels and things recently. Um, that's like moles per deciliter and things like that. It's just no, just sensible units, please. <laughs> So, so next, so yeah, so Catherine's got the cricket. Yeah, yeah. Are you looking at kind of other sort of yeah CNC mills, or are you going to go down the metal route at all? Eventually, yes. Um, I'm rapidly outgrowing the space that I've got at the moment. So it's a single car garage. Um, I've lost. I'm going to say about. I've lost about a thir- three hundred mil each side um, by battening it out and insulating the lot because it was it was really cold in there um 
I did a Christmas craft fair once. When I, this is when I had the X car running, and I think a lot of my issues with the X car stemmed with the fact that the garage was damp, cold, and wet. Um, like belt tension would be different every day, um, so I've insulated it all out, um, and it's it's just big enough for me to move around in um, as it is. I mean, I've got the laser pulled out at the moment, um, just so I can get to the to change the power supply when it comes, and. I mowed the, the grass at the back garden yesterday and I haven't been able to do the front because I can't get the lawnmower through the garage. It's it's that tight. Um, Dismantle so, it and then rebuild it yeah. on the other side. I'm not, I'm not allowed to take it through the house. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, okay, don't have to mow sensibly. the grass. <laughs> so, yeah. So Catherine sensibly hands you a pair of scissors. Yeah. <laughs> meadow, is, meadow, like, like, meadow, meadow gardens are the, are the on-trend thing. It's just me being lazy, to be honest. My parents live three doors down. I could just go and get my dad's lawnmower. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, it's supposed to be no mow May, isn't it? For uh, helping the bees. No, I think ours is like no May, no mow since January, to be honest. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those jobs that I, I, I just hate doing. And I don't, like me and gardens just don't mix. I said it before and I'll say it again. Gardening is done with a flamethrower or concrete. Yep. <laughs> Sod pollen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I've mowed uh, back uh, front garden. I oh, know, I think, yeah, front turn um, back twice so far this year. Should have done more, but again, we like to let the, yeah, so let the daisies grow, let the dandelions grow, let the, let the bees get as much pollen as they can. And, then once yeah, they're done, take it back down. It's quite funny if you walk down our street because, like, next door neighbours, a few rows down, they're 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 retired. Um, the other side are retired, and then like it's my mom and dad, and theirs is like you just said, it's concrete. Um, but everybody's got this nice, nicely kept garden, and then you walk past ours, and it's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we get put to shame by uh, our next door. Um, She's in her nineties, I want to say. But her, you know, she she grows all sorts of stuff, and she's got the greenhouse. And it's all everything's beautifully maintained. It's it, it, gardening's her thing. Um, so ours is like junk storage and uh, wild meadow gone rogue. I think would be uh, <laughs> pallets and sheds. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've got like a uh, down, down the road from us. It's sort of like um, it used to be an old like fishing pool where we could go into like match fishing and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think it's like stocked with fish anymore. But a few deer have sort of come from a local area and they're, they're around, the, around the pool at the moment. And if anybody says like the front garden's looking, oh, yeah, I'm trying to attract the deer. I want the deer. <laughs> Get them to come, come over the road from the boating lake over the road onto my garden. <laughs> sort of thing. But. I don't know what happened. I can imagine opening the curtains one morning, one being there, and me just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> just looking through breakfast. <laughs> I'm just thinking venison for the freezer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, we're not allowed to hunt in this. We're not really. You could be kind of the right place with the right license, haven't you? Not yeah. Just a case of walk this way, dear, into my freezer. <laughs> Just step into the freezer. <laughs> when, when somebody somebody showed me a photo of them on the phone, and I was like, "Oh, cool! They don't look that big." And then, like the day after, I went over to them myself. I didn't realize how big they're, they're like the size of horses, like massive antlers. One just cut me off across the path that I was walking, and I was like, "I'm not getting any closer. This <laughs> this isn't going to end well." It's the same with like moose in Canada. You know, people yeah. think that then a, a moose is like the same size as a deer. And then, like, no, really isn't. It's like yeah, closer yeah, to exactly. an elephant than a deer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or transit van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get as many sheets of plywood in a moose, though. <laughs> I don't know, but they've got excellent roof rack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone must have done moose antler roof rack or roof bars or something. It's got to be some. <laughs> lunatic out there somewhere yeah i would imagine so yeah <laughs> because the other, i mean the other option for the front garden is to go with the approach that um 
make it so has yeah where well, you just kind of oh. yeah sheep comes down off the hills and keeps all the uh the front gardens nice and short yeah <laughs> we we did say that um because my wife and i would love to get some land at some point um do that kind of thing if she wants to like i, I want to build an underground workshop bunker type thing in you know colin Thursday, and she wants to do all like the pasture type stuff and growing all sorts of things and all the, you know the stuff that makes my nose hurt um <laughs> but we said about getting goats just because goats are yeah. absolutely awesome and natural lawnmowers yeah but you make sure you keep your washing at a level where they can't reach it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're uh thinking about when, when we do the back garden we're gonna um we're gonna get a couple of ducks um felix is absolutely obsessed with ducks um if you ask him you say to him where do you want to go he'll, he'll say ducks he'll say he wants to go and feed the ducks um so we, we were looking at getting them once the, once the garden's done just maybe getting two um but then there's the whole issue of like foxes and other things around here but yeah we, i'm sure we could build something that would keep them safe yeah, or target tracking Nerf guns or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, the the childminder that we send him to, she's just given an allotment. Um, so she has like nice. four children. Um, they've just given her an allotment. It's quite a big one. So she's putting a mud kitchen down the one end, and then her her like her allotment next next door neighbour. They've got they've got chickens. So they said the kids can come and learn about rearing the chickens and stuff like that. So I think that'd cool. be quite an experience for him. Mm. I'd, I'd like to have chickens kind of in the back garden, but I know our dog would just just probably just worry them to death, basically. Yeah. She'd just want to chase them. Because we have been in a couple of places where there's been chickens, and she was like, ooh, what is this thing I can chase? Not necessarily <laughs> in a malicious way, but just, you know, she was, I mean, she's a, I mean, she's caught, when she was younger, she did catch a couple of birds that made it into the garden and didn't escape in time. <laughs> yeah didn't kill them just kind of came along with like oh i've got this bird we took this bird yeah it's just like drops a bird in, down the, on your lap it's strange enough our, our cat's exactly the same as that if she catches a bird she'll bring it back to you like really delicately she won't kill it she'll bring it back to you and just like drop it at your feet and then it'll fly off and she'll sit there staring at you as if said why didn't you get it i brought that for you <laughs> um did it with a frog the other day she tried to catch a frog until right. she realized that it jumps and she, she was just like, nope, I'm out of here. It jumps and it slides like <laughs> little green slimy thing. I don't want that. Yeah, we had, we had a frog in the garden once. The, it, we, we had a few um, stumps, kind of, yeah, not, not stumps, I guess, it was just sort of the, the next bit up from the stump, just sort of lying around in the garden, sort of logs, essentially, from some trees. And there was one that was a tiny little frog just living in the in the end of there's a hole in the stump because it'd been around for years so a little bit a little bit rotten away it was just tiny one of the kids spotted it tiny it was like right we've got to try and get rid of this before the dog spots it because we'll just chase <laughs> yeah, it we get we get loads of them around here we've got like loads of little yeah, ones so. in the garden at the moment um it's it's sort of like um marshy type land around here so the, the boat in lake um opposite us it's on the lead down to it you've got about that much water where it's just all like um bulrushes and and reeds mm. um and they must must come across from there but our back garden's absolutely full of them it's like you, you like it's hard not to find a frog in our garden you lift something frog, <laughs> frog. go to the other side frog so yeah ours is basically frogs and hedgehogs i absolutely love yeah it. yeah i thought i had a hedgehog the other day um so we've taken some trees down in the back garden to make make space for when i'm I mean, you've, you've probably heard me say this before hundreds of times, but I'm building a workshop in the garden. Um, I've said this for the last two years since, I, <laughs> since I've known you. Um, I'm, built, I'm definitely doing it this summer. Um, you've probably heard you that, said as that well. last summer. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, but yeah, uh, so I was moving these trees and I heard the rustling underneath. I'm like, oh, hedgehog. Take one off the top. No, it's just my cat sitting there staring up at me. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Didn't even know how she got in there because there's like no gaps around it yeah, yeah but cats are liquid they, yeah. yeah they can yeah 
get where everyone get into anything. If the head can fit through, they can get in. Yes. The basics of it. <laughs> so, uh, so have you got any particular plans for this workshop? Um, so I'm thinking about keeping the one that I've got down in the garage at the moment. That's going to be more of like a CAD cam room. So I'm going to have the okay. laser CNC, nice. move the 3D printers out of here, back down, back down into there. Um, and then have um, the one side set up for Catherine sewing stuff. So put her sewing machines up for her. So she's got somewhere she can go and sew when, whenever the mood takes her. Um, so like bandsaw and everything's going at the top. It's just, it's somewhere where I can have a, a permanent table saw set up. Um, yeah. I work outside a lot at the moment because of like space issues, but then that also constrains me to weather issues as well. So if it rains, yeah. I can't do anything. Mm. Um, you get that like three minute mad rush where you can cut a piece of plywood outside to get back in the garage. <laughs> That's how you run so, out, set up, wipe everything down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best thing I brought for the wipe down was a leaf blower. Brought a leaf blower recently. <laughs> So it's just like get the bandsaw out, so just cut it outside. It's like right, sweep down time, just turn the leaf blower on. Just, mm. There you go, job done. Com compressor in the air nozzle. That's, that's yeah. basically the only thing connected to my compressor is the air nozzle. Yeah, isn't it Ryobi or Makita? It's like a handheld blower. It's literally it's kind of it's like a leaf blower, but it's it's, it's smaller. So it's literally kind of yeah, like I know the size that, of um, a kettle with a long spout. I think Ryobi do the foggers, so you know the the antiseptic disinfectant fogger mm -hmm. things uh yeah. we've got a couple of those at work that site team use well used uh ryobi ones um but yeah i think like you said they do do a handheld leaf battery like it's the one plus system mm. yeah because that's kind of I've, I've, there's who is it there's somebody on youtube who does that literally has a small and it's just like blows everything off it's, it's a good way doing it yeah i'm sure we did it, it's I, I mean i keep a um air duster on the end of my compressor full yeah. time yeah, so yeah it's so. perfect for i think it's probably the most used tool i have for the compressor <laughs> I, I was considering <laughs> using that for in in my office just to dust everything just using a, a hepa filter and, a, and an air blower <laughs> to get into all the, you know, the, the little nooks and crannies in the desk between all the stuff that you haven't moved for several months you know, just to get all that dust out to save having to move them and disturbing the, uh, the feng shui of the desk. And I can casually glance around and look at the PlayStation and think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had some um, electrical works done on Thursday. And um, I sort of turned all my servers off and everything. And then, you know, because you turn them all off remotely, but then so actually turn them back on, you've got to go and push the physical buttons. And then realize just how much they all need a bit of a service and a de dust and stuff like that. It's, yeah, I really should. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the, uh, so that's the comment I get the most on Instagram your workshop's too clean. Um, <laughs> oh, you get that in the WhatsApp chat as well, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do you talk about that? <clears throat> Yeah, but that, that, that's, that's only because of we're extremely shamefully... <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, it's, I... it's one of those sort of those things that I feel that if I go into it clean I'm in a better <clears throat> better mind frame creativity like creatively um mm -hmm. I can just say right this is what I need to do it's there um and pick it up and get on with it and then like yeah so it's, there's nothing worse than going into a workshop and it, you've got to clean up yeah, before, before you, you can start started. the project that yeah. you're I mean, that, just in the mood to do you've got to spend half an hour yeah yeah i mean that's that's more often than not the state of the tinkerage it, it is at the moment i, mean, I spent yeah. a few minutes this afternoon just tidying a few things away but it was just like no there's still just so much stuff out it's just i don't want to be in there making yeah it's just it, I've got to clear the mess. And it's not even a case of, oh, I'll shift the mess on the main workbenches to kind of the, the side one, because the side one is already overflowing with stuff where I've done that in the past. Yeah. That's very much how I was um, the week before Makers. I, I couldn't move because of obviously having the bike, which is quite a big thing. Then you've got the two cigar box guitars, which have been set up. So I don't really want to knock into those and have to like set them up again. Um, 
but it was it got to the point where I was like, right, what what can I do? I need a small project just to keep to keep me active. Um, so I decided to build another guitar. <laughs> it was just like it was like I need to Why do something. Not? So yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, that's something uh, maybe to, to look at talking because you make because it's good for you. Yeah. I mean, it's something we sort of, you sort of mentioned a few times within the, the, for people who haven't worked out, you're, you're one of the members of the Maker's Waffle sort of WhatsApp yeah. chat. WhatsApp group, yeah. Um, so. The inner circle. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, for, for you, like a few others in the group, you know, actually sort of making is a is i would say for one of a better word yeah it's a, it's a form of therapy yeah it's oh. it's my release um so it, it's it's almost like my inner calm um i know that i can go and spend a few hours in the workshop um not necessarily like even if it's like working on big projects it's just a way to clear my mind it takes my mind off other things um by by working on something until i get distracted by something else and then go on to that again but <laughs> Yeah. So do you find do you find yourself kind of not thinking about the things that maybe are on your mind because you're having to focus on the things yeah. you're making? Yeah. So with the guitars, the reason that I sort of got into them, um, they're very like, mathematical. So you you got your fret spacing and everything. Um, mm. I I usually draw that all out by hand. Um, so I've got my my little um, notebook with fret scales in it, and I've got my my ruler laying all the fret marks out. Um, on that but like you said thinking about the bridge height and things like that they, they take our mind off like the the rubbish side of things um so if, I, if i've been having a particularly bad day at home i know that of an evening i can go into the workshop do a little bit of that and it helps to clear my mind um so sort of like if tensions are raising high um at home like you, you know and you just you just need a little bit of uh, a little bit of breathing space sometimes yeah it, it sort of puts me in a better mind frame sort of think about things from other people's perspectives maybe um yeah i can imagine that the drawing everything up is a meditative process as well yeah yeah so before i make anything um guitar wise i mean i will i will still physically draw it out pen and paper um uh, before mm. i before i start any digital work or anything i'll just go and grab a roll of paper I'll lay all my fret marks out, work out my um, neck angle, and and just go from there. And then once I'm happy with the physical design, I'll then make it digital, and and go from there with it. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that kind of that tactile physical drawing process as well. Yeah, um, it's, it's that kind of it's going through the motions of the design process. Uh, with the making rather than just jumping straight to digital i think yeah yeah it's always nice to have a fallback as well so some sometimes i will just draw it by hand and then um glue that plan down to a piece of mdf cut it out on the band sort of make routing templates that way rather than digitalizing it so it's mm. it's one of those i kind of approach every build slightly differently i try and do new things on on every project that i do but um, with the with the bikes as well, so I want to start putting those out as a kit, um, so that you get a kit and you assemble mm. it yourself. I thought the other day that now that I've got the laser, I can make some routing templates. So while the work bee is working on one, I can be doing another one by hand. Yes, yeah, that's um, good idea, yeah. So it's like dual production almost. Because I'm, I'm using a um, a compression bit on the router, so it's coming straight off the CNC machine, very minimal edge sanding everything's nice and clean as it is mm. so it's, it's literally as soon as it's off that cnc machine you can go in a box and get it shipped out especially but, if the customers are going deal. to finish it yeah yeah leave the finishing to them yeah oh. it also sort of neg negotiates i still need public liability insurance from what i understand i might be i might be completely wrong on this one but it also puts the onus if anything goes wrong it's back on the person who assembled the kit yeah um so if you didn't tension your screws enough you nuts and bolts on your wheels and the wheel falls off while you're riding it it's back to you kind of in a way i mean yeah. i might like i say i might be completely wrong on that but that's just looking on forums online that's my understanding of that 
but like I say before before I do decide to go for that, I think I am gonna look into it properly, explore both ways, and see where we go. Good shout, yeah. Do you think you might sell the plans separately or as well, or not I, at all? just go with the kids? L- looking at it, but I'd like to be able to get something in place so that it's not copied. Um, I know you can't really protect anything like that, but if the kits don't work out, I, I was thinking about putting the plans in like public domain, um, maybe on Etsy, maybe through through my own store when I get one. Yeah. But, yeah, I've had a lot of interest in the plans. Quite a few people have asked, asked for plans, so that's definitely a possibility. I think if you'd if you'd have had a you know, yeah a handful of USB sticks with plans on at Mega Central, I think <laughs> made a, yeah a nice little killing. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and snapped out your hands. So I mean, I know you you've you've been you've mentioned about maybe doing kind of variations on the bike. Uh, yeah, for so, next year. Yeah, uh, next year I'm thinking about scaling it up to sort of BMX size wheels. So like, yes, tw- twenty inch wheels. Um, maybe even electrifying it, <laughs> so that it's sort of like. But look, looking into motors, I'm, at the moment I'm sort of deciding whether to go for like a hub centric motor or a motor inside the bike that will run a chain drive to the rear wheel. Um, I so there's a perfect opportunity there for a uh, tool brand to get involved with providing some some drills that might power the uh, yeah the bike. That would be perfect. Easy Swan perfect. style, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some yeah, the, the, yeah. The goal was for it to sort of like be rideable by adults as well, just for yes, do do a few laps around the NEC like. <laughs> That's be- before the Hilton, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not post drinks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the ideal getting from. I that. missed it. 20, 2018, There was uh, Jim from Wave Cycles, with the help of a few others, did make a bike. Mm. Did make its way into the Hilton lobby uh, of the evening, <laughs> if I remember correctly, from things that I saw. <laughs> So you remember 2019, Laura Camp, she was riding hers around, wasn't she? She was riding her electric bike through the NEC at the end of the, the end of the show. Yeah. So I thought, maybe, so, maybe. Yeah. maybe. And, then, and then Colin was on the uh, the Mantis Robots um, Lego yeah. go-kart this year. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's a crowd of people gathered, and you're like, what's that? And you see Colin zoom through the middle. <laughs> Sideways, Yeah. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think things like that really do kind of take uh, audiences' attention very easily. Yeah, so I think. I think you're onto a, a winner there if you can kind of make an adult-sized. I mean, even if you just went for a balance bike, yeah, you know, let's just scale it up to balance bike, so it's it's foot powered. I think that would that would be fun. Yeah, you know, fantastic in itself because yeah. people forget how fu- how fun that is. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like yeah. You know, Pushing a trolley around Tesco's yeah, at the supermarket, yeah, it's laden up with stuff so you can kind of balance on it and kind of yeah, slide along. Or you have to drift, drift around the corners. <laughs> like uh, you get the Mantis Robots uh, like a go kart, and you have like a, a Mario Kart session around the uh, around the NEC. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about the bike. I was just thinking that I'd have to make the rear tire a little bit wider because it's like it looks in proportion as it is the size it is. But I'm thinking mm. if I'm going a bit bigger, I need to get the slightly ch- uh, chunkier like wheels the on the back. Tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah, you should be able, you should be able to get some. If you go for twenty inch, I'd have thought you'd get some fat bike tires at twenty inch. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh... Was it when they did the like the, the California Cruiser style ones, and they had like the really big fat rear wheels, and then the really long forks and spindly front end. Yeah, that, that's probably a good kind of chunky width. Is that Schwinn? Yeah, be... Some of the early, some of the Schwins back in the eighties were like that, I think. Probably. 
She's kind another, of um, forerunners of the modern mountain bike. Mongoose have recently done one with the with the fat fat chunky tires on it. Um, but like I said, that's a twenty six inch wheel, so that's slightly too big. Slightly yeah. too big. So go bear in mind the the size of the bed of my CNC as well. Um, True. So I mean, I mean, I could go, I could go big, but it's it's like, how big can I go and still produce it all in house? Mm. It could be a good collaboration for you on on the twenty inch <coughs> one, and then get Duncan involved for uh, yeah the, the the big human side. It's ab- absolutely mm. fantastic uh, Connect Four that he did. That was yeah brilliant. That was absolutely. I, have to, I, I think for, in terms of standout stands, I think the Mike Gosport stand, yeah, was yeah. for for not being a um, a, a, a manufacturer or a, a, a tool supplier, a, a, a shop. I mean, yeah, they, they weren't trying to sell anything really, other than kind of make spaces are brilliant. Of those stands, I think they really stood out as kind of they had so much going on, so involved, yeah. and they had they'd made some fantastic things. It'd be nice to see more kind of maker spaces having stands. And having a variety of things sort of happening, because I think there were only the two maker spaces representing anything like that. So it was Gosport and uh, Telford, but there weren't. The, yeah, Hackspace Foundation weren't there. Men's Shed were obviously not quite the same. It's just thing, about, yeah. They, yeah. they were. They they didn't really have much of anything, really. Um, it was kind of the sort of thing you might almost find at the back of a church. You know, <laughs> a, a few post, a few postcards, and, and one kind of exhibit, and a couple of yeah, you know, couple of blokes. Yeah, and they were stuck away in a corner as well, which probably wasn't their their choice. But yeah, you know, the, the the two makerspace ones, but particularly Mick Gosport, were. Yeah, absolutely stand out. Yeah, every time I walked past, there was always people waiting to have a go at the tool wall or connect for it. There was always somebody yeah. waiting to do to have a go of something, and the, the mini robot wars that they had on as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah like the, the quieter <laughs> robot wars. Yeah. The, the slight, <laughs> slightly better. <laughs> yeah, the big one. The big one. I think. Yeah, that was on my kind of viewpoint having it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The Robot Wars was at the last one as well, but was in a different venue. Yeah, I heard about that, but I I didn't see it at the last one. Yeah, because the last one they had I the didn't. um the Power Wheels racing thing, didn't they? They had the little racetrack yeah, set up at the yeah, back yeah. with the like the the Barbie jeeps that had been converted to run a little bit faster. Yeah, so it's like the the American Power Wheels racing series sort of stuff. See, I don't remember was... that. I must I must have missed that. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I didn't get to go on it, but it was just it was like tucked away. Yeah, it was uh, in the corner, walking, wasn't it, it was right over the left hand side of the hall, just like in its own little corner completely away from mm. everybody else. Uh, yeah, definitely missed that. And and we are talking three years ago. Yeah, we've all kind of slept since then. It just, it just seems a bit like a fever dream. Thinking about what happened three years ago, it's just like, <laughs> was that a make it like the, the suit of armor that was there? It was there again this year, and I didn't realize there was a suit of armor in the hall until I was watching. I think it was Shadow Foam's video. So I, mm. obviously, I'd, I'd seen Al walking around in his, but one yeah. of the um, yeah, one that, of the stands was, had a med- yeah. Proper plate armor, medieval. Yeah, I think it was. They were, they were selling like, was it a polishing compound or something? And they were showing how it shined up half of the suit of armor. But I only oh. saw it in the, I saw it in the the shadow foam video, and I was like, oh, that that was there. And then <laughs> when when the camera panned around and where it was opposite, I was like, I should have seen that because I was standing on that stand talking to the guy about that, um, the wood filler glue gun. So I was like, oh, I should have seen that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I, I went to so few of the stands, really did. Yeah, I, I went to more this year than I did last time. But I was I was generally just dragging people around when they just kind of turn up and go, Jamie, I'm looking for so and so, and then drag them off yeah. to where the stand was, and then kind of just take a loop around and just kind of 
a quick nosy, but yeah, yeah not not as much as I. Uh, no, I think liked. a similar sort of thing. I was spending the majority of the time like, walking around looking. There was a few that I wanted to visit that I'd seen on, on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind checking that out and looking at what they do. Um, mm. But then majority of my time I spent walking around looking for people. Yeah. <laughs> or like you just said, showing people. They were all like, oh, you've got your bike. Where's, where's Who's Nest? It was taking people to the Who's Nest Center to show them, <laughs> show them their bike. Um, Look what I've done. Because <laughs> I did this. <laughs> There's um, Bobby Duke because when we, when we first got there, I put it down Bobby Duke was just sort of like standing. There was nobody around him, and I said to Catherine, let's go, let's go and speak to Bobby, and I'm telling him about the bike, and he was like, "Will it hold an adult's weight?" <laughs> I was like, "Will it?" I was like, "Yeah, it's held, it's held my weight." And Bobby looks at me, he goes, "I'm gonna," and then Nicole's just like, "No, <laughs> no, no not. do not sit on it." <laughs> so. Yeah, you do the you do the break it or walk away with it. I think yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we don't we don't need to be going to a British hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to deal with our insurance. Uh I can, I can imagine him making one though. His would be carved out of something. Yeah, carved yeah. out of a rock. <laughs> Flintstone style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh look! I've got these. I've just dug these two boulders out of the ground. Yeah. That, that, I mean, there's some merit in that. That, that, that would have some. That would be some thoughts, yeah. Low, low sensor of gravity. Yeah. Hot yeah. wheels. <laughs> oh, imagine trying to get them smooth. Yeah. <laughs> and centered. Yeah, you'd have to get these. You'd have to get them absolutely centered, wouldn't you? Otherwise, it'd be like, okay, it seems to settle in this one position. Some lunatic will stick them on a lathe. <laughs> I'm sure we can probably pick a handful of lunatics too who would gladly jump on that challenge. Okay. <laughs> Depending on the rock, I'm sure with some carb a carbide cutters, you'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. But are we allowed to talk about lathes and carbide cutters? <laughs> Well, I mean, technically, we're not we're not turnists, so we're probably okay. <laughs> Spinning my <rises. laughs> Oh, but we do have uh, Tim from TF Turners in the um, in the chat. He just said, uh, "Let me say late." Are there those the, the things that you put like a vegetable on and then turn them and it's like spiralizing? <laughs> because technically, that is a lathe, isn't it? A spiralizer it is, it's yeah. a lathe. <laughs> Vegetable. <laughs> it's, it's just a matter of scale, isn't it? Yeah. It's a. Uh, is that a lathe something you've thought about, Dean? You know, um, yes, it? yes, it is. Um, it is on the list. So, I was looking, thinking of something. This is sound really silly now. Portable, so, so so it can be put away. Um, hmm. But I think once. Once I do finally get into gear and do this workshop, I think it, it's 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 not on the cards. It's this year, right? All. Yeah, this year, definitely this year. <laughs> it's going to be this year. But yeah, it's it's something that's potentially on the cards. Um, I'm kind of in a fortunate position with my job um, where I've got access to equipment like that. So if mm -hmm. I, if I do need to use the lathe or like even even the engineering lathes, I can just say to them, "Look, can I can I stay behind an hour?" I've got this X, Y, Z project that I'm working on. Can I have a go on the lathe? Um, and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, sure. That's a good position to be in. Um, Cause I think it shows the kids that the tools do get used as well. It shows them different mm. techniques. Yeah. So. And, and, and I think that's good for, for the lowest, lower age groups, but it's also particularly good, I think for, you know, six formers and the like. Yeah. 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 So we, we had some, um, had some six formers this year doing I was really, really like impressed with them, the way that they handled it. We had some six formers turning um vacuum form vacuum forming molds. So they were doing like domes because they're doing a lighting project. Cool. And it was the the whole sort of like we could CNC it and then one of them said, Are we allowed to use the lathe? And we were just like, Yeah, go for it. 
set it up, showed them how to use it. Obviously, we supervised them, but some of the stuff that they do, absolutely amazing. We probably should explain, if anyone hasn't actually worked it out, that your job is working in a yeah. design technology department of a school. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a design technology technician, um, or woodcutter, as the as the kids say. Uh, <laughs> but so it's the like, oh, you want this material? Things. Give it to that man there; he'll cut it for you. Um, but yeah, it, it does involve a lot more than that. But that's basically the premise of it. Um, so it's it's all like stock control, ordering things in, tool maintenance, um, mm -hmm. bits and pieces like that. But main job description is prepare materials for for classes. So I mean, playing on the tools I'd, when you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd, I don't mind that. That's that's good. But it's, it's one of those things that, I, I mean, I've used a table saw pretty much every day for the last, I'm thinking about nine years now, I've been working in that sort of environment. Um, and it's still one of the tools that scares me. It's like, I use it every, every day, but it's still one of those, so. one of, still one of those tools, like I say, every time I'm always con constantly making sure the guard's in place, the ground guard, um, mm -hmm. making sure that the sled and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've, I've talked about this in this part. I, I mean, I'm probably going to get rid of my table saw because I, 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 can't, I can't use it inside the tinkerage. I have to take it outside the tinkerage. That's become increasingly difficult for me. And to be honest, the last time I, I last few times I used it, the, the level of, I, I would use the word fear almost. Uh, it's a bit more than just respect. Yeah. I mean, I, as I've mentioned in the past, I mean, I, I was using kind of 18 inch blade Watkin. Uh, essentially, cabinet saw, you know, sliding table saw, um, and a, a, I would say, a 12 or 14 inch um, smaller one. Yeah, you know, dozens of hours a day when I was working in industry. And we were doing, I mean, some of the stuff we were doing was absolutely crazy in terms of kind of, if you look at it in terms of from a health and safety perspective, you know, literally cutting, yeah, you know, cutting, yeah. You know, uh, I think our smallest samples that we had to make were uh, 50 mil by 50 mil. Um, for we said that was for uh, rupture tests. Basically, we 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 hot glued them to metal blocks uh, and then just pulled them apart. Uh, the samples of cement bonded particle board we were making. So if, yeah, 50 mil by 50 mil, I mean, it, and we doing that just literally inches away from these stupidly sized blades and doing that kind of you know, for hours on a day. And, but I had that, yeah, you know, when you've got a blade that big, it will you know, literally take your, your hand off, not just taking fingers off, it will take your hand off. Yeah. You kind of, you gain a respect for it and bit, using it all the time, you have that kind of persistent, it's that familiarization. It's become complacent yeah. then, isn't it? Yeah. There is that it's danger, um... absolutely very much in, in the david pachuto school of thought about the router as well so like router routers i use them on the cnc machine i use a handheld router table is probably one of the tools that i hate the most um mm. so the table saw you cut your finger off you've got a good chance of being able to save that finger the router table you gone yeah um or it just takes a split second as well if you if you're not paying attention to which way you're routing and it catches the grain the wrong way yeah, it's absolutely. it's throwing your workpiece across the other side of the room. Um, well, so the so much energy. The collet's, the collet's not done it properly. Yeah, I mean, mm. I had a, I had a, one probably about ten years ago, um, doing some routing, and whether I just wasn't paying attention or or, or whether I'd made a mistake, yeah, I I don't think I was sort of distracted, but I clearly hadn't done the collet up because it was it was like. It, started chattering it wasn't sort of doing right and i kind of sort of yeah next thing i know i'm thinking right this isn't right so i start kind of yeah took my thumb off the power and, and sort of pulled the uh big half inch router out of the off the workpiece the next thing i know there's this straight flute half inch flute flying across the kind of outside bounces off the wall of the tinkerage and heads back towards me it's like Oh, that wasn't good. Yeah. Good job. It lost a bit of energy in the tinkerage wall. Yeah. Still. 
Yeah, I always remember the first, first time I used a, a, I brought myself a router at home to use to to make guitars. Um, so I, but back when about me, I used to work in a music shop. Uh, one of my best friends owns owns a music shop, um, and we we did repairs and things like that. And that sort of brought me down into the oh, I want to try and make my own electric guitar. Um, but when I brought my first router, I brought a cheap set of router bits with it as well, um, mm-hmm. as as you do, and then like routing against a template, um, snapping a route a bit, and then you do the safety check, then you pat down to see, <laughs> you're just like, oh, yeah. nope, I'm okay. <laughs> Is okay. it embedded in it's me like, somewhere? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, I don't want to look just in case, but I can't feel it, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, it's either gone straight through and it's fine, but it's yeah. going to be checked. Or... <laughs> there, there was a discussion on one of the Facebook groups, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, for the for the video listeners, um, yeah. We've yeah. had a, an, another <laughs> feline invasion, <laughs> but um, yeah, there was there was a discussion of the, uh, the the benefits and risks of cheap router bits and expensive router bits, or, you know, you know, name brand good quality ones. And one of the one of the benefits of cheap router bits was that they're usually more likely for the shank on them to bend than to shatter so when they fail they're more likely to stay a- attached and just shake the crap out of the, the router itself than to um than to completely shear off and end up in your leg whereas the more expensive bits the heart the shanks are hardened yeah, more, yeah so they're more likely to shatter and uh and and end up in your give your summer teeth or end up in your leg or something yeah, that wouldn't be good. No, I have a not. feeling that Dean may have frozen on us. I suspect you might be right. Uh, it looks like he's he's either having a very intense uh, staring competition with, his, with the, the with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the rain. There we go. Disappeared. Yeah, he's died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I mean, I think. I mean, the router. I mean, just. I mean, there's just so much going for it in terms of. You no know, load speed of like twenty eight thousand RPM or something ridiculous. Like yeah, that. you've got a, you've got a high you've got a high speed. So you've got this 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 handheld device. I mean, if you, obviously the router table is slightly different, but if you if you hand holding it, you've got a device that's got this huge gyroscopic effect. Mm-hmm. It's spinning something at high speed, something that's very sharp that potentially is sticking out the end of it. And yeah, I mean, just I mean, particularly if you use a, a, a I mean, I've got. I can't remember the model, the Devolt D W six two five or something like that. It's kind of yeah, half inch. I mean, the thing's about six black and kilos, yellow. black and yellow, yeah. and big, and yeah. a sharp spinny thing on it. And yeah, just to, yeah. just to hold it in place. Again, probably a tool I'm going to get rid of because I can't mm. use it safely. I might be all right in a, a, a router table, uh, but I haven't got space really for a router table. Although I have it's, it's, it's big enough, I've actually used it as a router table on it in, it, in itself. There's nothing you can't do with a half inch router that you couldn't do with multiple passes on a handheld, smaller, easier to use router. Kitchen worktops. Still do it, just slower. Uh, I, no, I've, I've done both. Give me the half inch router, for, and that, that's the reason I ended up with the half inch router. Yeah. It's so much, so much easier to use. How many of those do you do a year, Andy? <laughs> Uh, on average, 0.1. <laughs> yeah, I won't be doing another one. That's for sure. I, honestly, I think one of the most because I, I bought the uh, the Makita trim router one and used it a handful of times. It's a phenomenal router. And then, of course, the like about a month after I bought the Makita one, the um, Katsu became a thing and became popular and I realised I could have saved myself about 150 quid. Um, but then I managed to get the AEG 18 volt router and I every time I need a router, that's the one I grab because it's it's just as good as the Makita and I don't have to deal with them, the, the flex. I've got the Katsu the corded katsu. My only issue with it is that the I managed to chip the little pinion gear that moves mm. it up and down in its base. 
So there's one half, two teeth missing. So I've kind of got to think. That's just on the on the base right. piece, or is it on yeah. the ramp itself? Oh, it's, so you can just replace the base. If yeah, know. I mean, yeah, I could, I'd probably just replace the gear. To be honest, it's probably a fairly standard part. Uh, it's just one of those kind of annoying anymore. things. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Three print. It actually, probably would be. It's a kind of locking. Got, actually, locking it's ring, got locks it? in place, yeah. so it's only just to pin it up and down. To be honest, I've probably got a Lego one that's the right size. <laughs> Might need to tr chop out the. Uh, you just put a fill the yeah. fill the inner bit with epoxy. Wait yeah, for it set and then just drill it out. Yeah, <laughs> but just just with more ABS plastic in a three D printer pen. <laughs> oh, just just piece of, another piece of uh, a short um, Lego rod into it and yeah, sure. <laughs> a super glue. A super glue, and then just <laughs> cut it off. Oh, we're now talking about butcher and Lego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is wrong. Back on okay. <laughs> That's because it's raining out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what the internet. It, it dropped connection. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the rain. And there's, there's yeah. storms due to hit across the UK this evening. I think mm. heading, I'm not sure which way they're heading, actually. I didn't look at the direction, but I think about one o'clock in the morning with you, a uh, thunderstorm here. Probably heading from one side to the other. Yes, but which way? I didn't probably. I really don't know. Yeah, I think really we've know. got one just rolling in by the look of it, looking at the weather app. Ah, uh, so it's probably coming down from you town to us. Then, yeah. Indeed. Yeah, because you're, you're Midlands, you're sort of Birmingham way. Yeah. Because I'm down in the southeast. You see, I'm, I'm in Warsaw, but nobody knows, nobody knows where that is. So I just say Birmingham. <laughs> it's just easier. Holland, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny because it's sort of like you got got um, Sneak's Wall Art and Nick the Flaming Turner. They're, they're literally like 20 minutes away from me, if that. And mm. first time I met them was at Maker Central. <laughs> just, just like... Well, I, I forget who it was. Um, might have been Justin, Garage Avenger, uh, talking about, you know, being at Maker Central and then suddenly being surrounded by other Norwegians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you look at the population density of Norway, I mean, they're so. Oh, yeah, it was all out. of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose we could make a joke about kind of Norwegian invasion force, but considering what's happening in Europe at the moment, it's probably best not to. Yeah, maybe, maybe leave that one out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's about that time of the evening where we give Rasmus some, some crap anyway. But... <laughs> no, I think well, he did really yeah, well. They, they he did really well yesterday in the Eurovision. I was going to say he, he was fantastic yesterday at Eurovision. <laughs> not sure Both which one he was. Norwegian but... entry <laughs> and, and as the Rasmus. <laughs> I think say, I, 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 I you should say, and that reminds me, if, if you, yeah, just, I mean, we're getting to that point where we need to start thinking about the, uh, the things that have been grabbing our attention. Um, I would certainly recommend the, the this week's episode of uh, Two Thirds Focused, which is actually labeled as Three Fourths Focused. Uh, it's, they've got Alf Miles Hackshack. Mm. on it's a really good episode that's very worth listening to if, if you've not already listened to it um, well all those all those folk on there have uh, all of them have been on here haven't they as well as well as being good friends they're also yes well, yeah we've i can say former contestants yeah. but contestants is not the right <laughs> way <laughs> guests i think is <laughs> Maybe we should brand it that way. Yeah, we should brand it. Do you want to go and be a contestant on our podcast? contestant on yeah. Maker's Waffle? Yeah. <laughs> We're going the onslaught. Oh um, yeah. So yeah, so I think we're reaching that point where we start where we start talking about the uh, sort of attention grabbers. So uh, yeah, guess we normally go we normally go first. So. Dean, yeah, obviously yep. make essentials out of the way, but yeah, what's been grabbing yep. your attention? Yeah. So a lot of people in the community who I, I was sort of aware of, but not following them until I'd seen them at Make Essential. So um, Ali from Cats Create, yes, yeah, another, another friend of the show, yeah. The the BMO from Adventure Time, like obviously because I hadn't been following them before, but now yeah. it's it's like wow, that's that's amazing. That is that genuinely so cool. is brilliant. Um, yeah, Ali yeah. is very good people. Yeah, yeah, they make some amazing things. 
Um, mm. I think can be some exciting things in the future as well. I think. Yeah, very much so. There's one to keep watching then. Yeah, keep eye on what they do. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then the the other one, sort of just like trying to electrify this cafe racer. So people like Mantis Robots um, and and just YouTube channels like that, um, almost sort of like it's a, it's a whole rabbit hole you can go down. Um, Big time, yeah, yeah. It, even our good friend uh, Andy, no master creation. Yeah, Andy, yeah, with his uh, his skateboard, just try not to fall off it. Same amount of times as he's done, but yeah, yeah, and, and uh, it's. There's quite. I mean, there's a lot to electrifying a, a, a vehicle. Mm. Whether you're talking a, a, some skateboard to a car, that I mean, there's all sort. I mean, there's, there's legislation as to what is and isn't allowed, depending on whether you want to take it on, you know, the highways yeah. or not. Um, I'm guessing if you don't go on the highway, then you, you're essentially unlimited in what you can do. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but it's the same with vehicles, <laughs> isn't it? You, yeah, you can. If you've got your own private land, you can drive as fast as you like. Um, it's what you do when you go on the highways. It's, it's the important thing. Yeah. yeah so it's kind of legislation. You like with hub motors. I think it, 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 this funny little things like it has to. You have to be able to see the power rating of the hub motor on on the motor. There's a limit to the sort of yeah. number of watts you can have. Mm -hmm. um, I think there has to be a speedo on the bike if it's a bike. There has to be a speedo. There's a variety of kind of, sort yeah, of things that have a, to be in place. A, there's a 45 kilometer per hour uh, restriction on the, on the motors that I was looking at just to fit in with the EU reg, uh, legislation on it to be able mm. to be classed as, as a as like a, a bike rather than a vehicle. Um, yeah. I think if it goes over that 45, it's it's classed as a vehicle and then it's eligible for, for other tests and things like that. Yeah. So like road safeties and stuff. MOTs yeah, I guess you. I guess you get to a certain. Yeah, get to a certain speed and power. You've you've got to kind of fall into the. Yeah, you know, especially because a motorbike. Yeah. Prevalent. Yeah. So yeah, and, and I guess it's probably a legislation that's constantly changing as well because it's a, an evolving technology. Yeah, moment. well, of course, all those like the voice scooters and things. They've been. Uh, that's been all the. the stuff over the last couple of years isn't it all those uh little you know electric powered scooters doing the rounds and things yeah because it's the, the segway things before that i think or swagways or whatever they were that the little hoverboard not actually hoverboards <laughs> yeah <laughs> weird wrong directional skateboards that you stand on <laughs> <laughs> those things yeah it's, it, it's i mean it, it, I've seen people use them for commuting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, uh, I'm not sure I'd want to commute on one of those. It just seems yeah, there's, lazy. A, there's a few people who come down this street. We've got at the end of our street, there's a DPD local depot. Um, but the vans stay on site overnight because they've got a like, secure car park. But you see the drivers come down about six o'clock in the morning. They're coming down on the, on the electric scooters, electric skateboards. Uh, yeah. Like the speed, the speed that they're hitting on them on the road, it's Crazy, it's quite frightening. It's like the one wheel. that they're just, just, just yeah, just that they're wearing just like the coat and the backpack, a pair of jeans, yeah. and just like <laughs> did about forty mile an hour down the street. It's like yeah, okay. I remember uh, Adam Savage talking about because he's he's a big fan of the the one wheel, and um, he's talking about coming back from his local coffee shop back to his cave or something. And he had the, the the cup tray with a couple of coffees on it, and he's <laughs> hurtling along the road on this one wheel. And then a fan shouted to him like, "Oh, hey, Adam!" And he sort of turned, waved, and then absolutely stacked it. And just him and the coffees in the one wheel were just all over the pavement. <laughs> you think it's it's a it's a great way to um, to take the skin off your nostrils. Isn't it? There's a, there's a YouTube channel that I was watching the other day, and they did that. I can't. I've got a feeling it was um, you know those guys, those dude perfect, the the trick shot guys. Mm. I'm pretty sure that yeah. they had a one wheel the other day, and, and similar sort of thing. One got distracted and just completely wiped out <laughs> straight into the straight into the dirt track. 
sounds it, about right. It's easily done. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, anyone that's ever anyone that's ever ridden a bike, whether it's a motorbike or a, a pedal bike, has probably come off at some point for yeah distraction or yeah you look at the wrong thing. Yeah, I mean, classically on a, on a particularly like mountain bike is you you look for where you want to go. Don't look at the the yeah the thing that you are wanting to avoid. Uh, look at the where you need to go to avoid it. To be honest, nine times out of ten, I do that when I'm walking anyway, so <laughs> no, no danger there. <laughs> I mean, do you remember that there was there was talk of an of an app for I apologize phones. you're about to get a cat across the screen um yeah. <laughs> just, just, just to walk across the laptop let's pop her down there <laughs> there was there was talk of an app years ago that would allow you to do your normal messaging that you were doing but it would overlay the view from your camera onto the onto the background yeah. of the phone screen while you were typing your text message because so many people were walking into lampposts it's just it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I, I can I can fully imagine that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, if I if I need to sort of take text messages or do something like that when I'm kind of out walking the dog or something, I pretty much stop. <laughs> maybe it's just my age. <laughs> well, I was going to say maybe it's an age thing to stop and then. <laughs> no, I used to I used to be like that when I was like change your glasses. Yeah, take my sunglasses <laughs> off, put the you know, <laughs> other glasses on because yeah. I was like dark, I use dark mode on my phone, so dark mode plus sunglasses means unviewable. Yeah, it's dark saying, mode like, if I was walking down the street as a, as a kid and got like a water bottle, I'd have to stop to take the lid off and drink it and put the lid back on and carry on. I couldn't just work out the whole go and drink at the same time thing. Yeah, yeah but it, I think it's it's just bad memories that's the reason why I do that. From the amount of times I've I've gone to do that with mates and they've patted me on the back or something where I've you know, just as I've gone to the swig. It's like Squeeze the driving... bottle at the bottom and it's yeah, like... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's my, my brother got me an absolute belter with, um, uh, while driving, uh, or while he was driving, I was a passenger. Um, and every time I went to take a drink out the bottle, he'd, he'd either tap the brake or tap, tap the accelerator and just end up splashing the drink all over your face. So... Yeah, again, <laughs> hyper awareness for when you're taking a drink in a car when someone else is driving. Yeah, uh, I don't know. That's my <laughs> discovery this week. Um, for those who, who don't know, the incredibly sad, sad news that Milky Way crispy rolls have been discontinued. And it is it is sad, sad times. But I was uh, we had a Eurovision party uh, last night, and I was the designated go and pick the stuff up from farm foods person, uh, and discovered uh, polio. Um, they had a pallet full of these at farm foods, and they are um, rebranded type well not rebranded but uh foreign import equivalent um milk chocolate coated wafer rolls with milk cream so the the closest thing you can get to a milky way crispy roll as a replacement and they're all right but that and eurovision have been my uh my two main focuses for this week focus i'm not allowed to say focus are we because that's the other guys my attention grabbers attention grabbers <laughs> yes <laughs> Between having filtered tools for at least I didn't say it was spiffing. I was going to say, I've listened, I've listened to both filter tools and two thirds focus today. So, kind of having that sort of terminology that's, on the that's mind. my uh, it, it, it's my focus attention spiff for tomorrow. <laughs> I think is to listen to both of those. <laughs> what about you, Andy? What's been grabbing your attention this week? Uh, trying to catch up with youtube videos from being away four days at maker central and other things just like completely brew my one tab was written up to nearly 1500 <laughs> um, but i think i need to i need to sort it out i need to sort out because I, I i think there's only probably i think i've now reached a point where it's the other stuff y yes i've still got probably a couple of hundred YouTube videos that I, I kind of want to watch at least to check to see if there are any I don't want to go further. Um, but I think I've probably reached a point where my number of one tab tabs now includes a far more non YouTube videos. And I need to probably 
both my, my both my kids have got exams starting this week. Mm. Um, well, once this week, one starts next week, and so for the next five weeks, it's going to not that it hasn't already been so exam sort of season, but it's going to be really into it. Um, but hopefully, once there'll be kind of easing of pressures, so I can hopefully catch up with some of those other on that one tab list that would not be YouTube videos. Um, so catching up with that, um, the, the game for getting the 3D printer going a little bit. So printed, uh, I think I put it on. That will be a great way to okay. expand your uh, your one tab list is when you start hitting Thingiverse and printables. You think that isn't already on there? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I've already got I've already got a sizable Thingiverse collection set um, <laughs> of things to print, uh, a variety yep. of sizes and things from useful things for 3D printers to useful things for other purposes. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, then kind of I think this week I printed sitting just there uh, a handles the Cyberman, the friendly Cyberman from. Doctor Who, um, so that printed this week. I've uh, got a few other kind of things I want to kind of. It's just getting back into the habit of it, getting into the habit of it. I think it's the key thing at the moment for me. Uh, rather yeah. than designing stuff, just make stuff and, and print off other things and make sure I can do that reliably. Get more used to using Cura again and, and the like. Uh, but I guess the big one is yesterday. Uh, my wife and I uh, put together a shed. It was delivered on the morning of the Friday of Maker Central. Uh, so it's, it's sort of taken two weeks, but we had good weather yesterday. My wife didn't have, she decided she wasn't going to do any uh, work um, yesterday. And so it's a case of, right, good weather. Let's get sorted and got the shed from, I'd already done preparation work on the base. Um, Kind of, yeah, just treating it, make sure that it'll, it'll last as long as possible. So put that together. So yeah, it's a six by four reverse mm. apex sort of shed. It's going to be purely for garden garden equipment um, and step ladder. <laughs> Never knew my real ladder. ladder. <laughs> so you're not um, real ladder. <laughs> oh, the real ladder won't fit in. The real ladder's too big. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, step 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 ladders and sort of sort of got a little step platform. So that'll go in there. Garden tools. That's and that's all that's going to be in there, which is going to free up space in the what is now the old shed, um, which will then get filled with stuff I want to keep from the summer house, which is falling <laughs> apart and needs to come down. And so there's a lot of stuff that also needs to go. So then once that so the, the can come trick down, is to throw stuff out as you. Yeah, Not just that's, that's, to the other shed. Yeah, because there isn't enough for it, even with the garden stuff out of the other shed. Well, mate, no, no, I, I, <laughs> I probably could because I'm good at packing stuff, but I wouldn't be able to get in don't, there. Don't Tetris it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not a good Tetris, so I can't do with the speed. But I'm, I'm good with kind of yeah. It's like when we go on holiday, I'm I pack the car. Cars and I, dishwashers. I can yeah. fit more stuff in. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the dishwasher. I've got method for the dishwasher. But it, it, it's just quite a convoluted. This is quite a convoluted plan because the the idea is new shed is just for garden stuff and, and the step ladder. Um, and I hadn't planned to put the step ladder in it, but I needed the step ladders to actually finish the roof yesterday. Um, so it was because right, I could take them back down to the other shed or the summer house, one lived in, one one lived the other, and it's like nope, we've got the shed here. Let's we'll just put them in there. Oh, they fit. Oh, right, they're going to stay there. I have to get a bungee to sort of stop them falling over. So the summer house, obviously I've got to clear out some of the junk that's got to go, similarly from the shed, because there's stuff in there that's got to go. Uh, but the shed will become the kind of store, store my, my, my stuff, my, my, my materials that don't fit in the tinkerage. Um, summer house then will, has to come down because it is starting, it's, it's rotten. I mean, there's a, there's a hole in the back corner that I can put my foot through. Uh, without and that's without like actually this. that's without actually interfering with any wood. It's just there's a hole there. Um, but the roof is good. But the roof on the shed is is not good because I replaced the roof on the summer house. Um, 
well, yeah, five or six years ago, I don't know, seven or eight years ago now. So you're going to hold so, the roof up on the summer house and then slide the shed underneath. <laughs> well, that that's one way of doing it. Um, I thought maybe just taking the roof off the shed and then just transferring the, the other roof over. Just always Might go for be. the simpler option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, considering the other shed's kind of literally bolted into the ground, I think it might, might be easier. Mm. Dig around that shed. <laughs> yeah. So that's the kind of, that, that's the kind of, so there's going to be a lot of to and froing, and uh, then at some point the, the summer house has to come down, um, which won't take much. In fact, it's probably, it's probably the, the shelves that I've got screwed to the walls that are holding it up, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> or just the stuff inside holding it up. At the back, maybe, yeah. The back does go for the ceiling. Um, but there are again, there are shelves. I mean, I've literally got some shelves in there made from scaffolding planks. So they're, they're probably holding it, yeah. uh, holding it together. But yeah, I've, I will have to over the next few months, over the next few weeks, hopefully, I can get a little garden stuff in. I've got to put some shelves in the new shed, uh, but I've still got up. I, I need to, um. Uh, I'd say creosote it, but cre I'm not using creosote, but kind of I got yeah. Or the wood, one shed, the wood fit, yeah, the shed, <laughs> shed finish type things. Yeah, you know, you've got to use your fences. So I just got got a pot of that. So I need to do that. Although it's got it's, it is treated already, but I want to give it a, a another coat. Uh, does it have in. the the catchphrase? Does what it says on the tin. Uh, I can't remember if it's that one or the other one. There's another one. <laughs> but I can't remember if it's that. I can't remember which one it is, but it's it's a really heavy can of uh, not can. It's plastic, big plastic pot, twelve liter pot um, of stuff. <laughs> so, but there's, and there's a couple of little bit. There's a couple of little tweaks I want to make to the shed, the new shed, um, just because if I mean we bought sort of the cheapest one that would do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a couple of little tweaks. You know, it's like. I mean, the hasp uh, and staple they supply is basically made from aluminium foil, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yeah, it's very painted black. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I want to I want to beef up the security a little bit. There's no external window sill uh, for the thing, so I want to put a window sill on. I want to put uh, a little kind of just piece above the the door uh, to stop kind of rain going into the gap between the door because the door. Mm. Although the door is parallel to the the walls, so I've got a nice easy gap both sides. The gap at the top is not even, so there's kind of <laughs> little space for rain to get in. So there's Sounds like a like standard that. shed. Yeah, um, I need to find. I've got. I need to find a bitumen paint because I've got a the classic. Uh, there's obviously the, the the OSB roof is screwed in place, and then there's mm -hmm. felt nailed over the top of that. And I managed to hit one of the screws with the nail. So of course it didn't go in, but it did make a hole in the felt. Mm -hmm. So I need to um, slab a good pile of bitumen paint on top of that. Just to well, you can get away stop. with just sliding another small bit of felt up underneath it. Uh, not where it is, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, so what I'll probably do, I do have some scraps of felt. Is I'll just slap a slab a, a, a big dollop of bitumen paint on and then just use a little square uh just to go over the top like a patch so it doesn't look like a great big black blob of two i i did a, a a bit of a bodge on uh my kind of outdoor area it was all did a couple of summers ago um it's all the corrugated see-through plastic roofing but because of where i built the whole thing it's right next door to next door's flat roof and it just happens to be a perfect uh transition point for all the local neighborhood cats to wander across and jump up onto the flat roof next door um and there's one like of all the cats in the in the local area there's just one really annoying side really really cheeky tom um and every time he jumps up there's just this like horrible noise where it was it was on exactly the same point every time and on the roof right in between two of the uh the, the joists for it and um it, typically in the winter time when it's more fragile um he managed to put his foot through it and 
broke this bit of panel and it just happens to be the least accessible panel in the entire of course room, the entire thing yeah um so, so fortunately it's, it's on a like a transition where the, it, it's like two sloping roofs so i put um some gutter in for like the one half of it to run into so what i've ended up doing is is screwed some uh, some packaging foam up underneath it. So where there's the big hole running through, the rain hits the packaging foam, runs off into the gutter, kind of back on itself. So it's the it's it's a perfect bodge. Because <laughs> I can't fix it any other way. <laughs> yeah, no, they're taking the entire one. roof off and yeah. Yeah, it would I'd have to either go through next door's garden, climb up on their flat roof, and then replace the panel from their roof. Um or take off 20 panels to get to it so yeah sod that <laughs> <laughs> yeah luckily that this holds just it's on the the most no, the second most accessible part so it's it's just down the side between it's kind of the shed and the greenhouse that is just oh, nice. the, the space to get a step ladder it was on the other side it'd be a bit more of a pain I literally couldn't fit the steps in there i had to use a, a stool to get to that side but it's um yeah i'm, ho I'm hoping that that's gonna make a sort of difference to obviously the garden stuff's all going to go in there it's going to be set up so it's just the garden stuff shelves in there for the right size things i may have i've got some uh, plastic shelves in the summer house, which I might use, and then I've, I've, I've got plenty of uh, old scaffolding boards and, and the pallet strips to make shelves however I need for the tools that I've got. So I need to, on a good day, today's not been a good weather day, I need to get all the garden tools up just to kind of sort of see, right, which ones do I need most accessible? So lawnmower needs to be you know, easiest to grab. The, mm. you know, the We've got a one of those sort of long arm chainsaws mm. kind of, sort of pruning saws it's only a pole 12 saw. inch blade pole saw yeah that's it that's the mm. phrase yeah it's like mm, is that actually going to fit in i can't remember if it's six foot or not because it's it, it goes at it going, it'll fit in. yeah it'll go at an angle yeah yeah so you go in just yeah, stick it through the roof or the side yeah, yeah. fine you know, the blade out and then just stick a, a cover for it plastic cover that's cover on from the other side yeah that's the thought <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll bear that in mind. I'll, I'll suggest that to suggest that to my wife. I, I, I'm not here for good ideas. I'm just here for fun <laughs> ideas. I think uh, it's, it's probably at that point where we should do an introduction for Dean as we sign off. <laughs> <laughs> where can where can people find you, Dean? What's the best place to find your so, work? I am on YouTube. Um, last video was over a year ago, though, so I don't tend to tell people about that, but I, I just have. Um, so Instagram is probably the best place, uh, and that's at Dean underscore makes. Um, and that's me. And, of course, on the, on the Vectric website. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Work so on the, on the uh, Vectric website under Partner Projects, um, you can find my plywood guitar if, you, if you've got a CNC and you want to have a go. But if if you do have a go, um, post it on Instagram, tag me. I just want to see what what other people have done with it. See other people do their own Definitely. take on it. Maybe maybe out of hardwood. Maybe out of like different body shapes. Um, change the body shape a little bit. See what see what you come fully, up with. Full. Tim did a full. Tim Sway did a full acrylic one, didn't he? Yeah. Guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. A, he's done a, an acrylic bass as well. So it's your bass guitar. Um, but yeah, acrylic would be really cool see one done in acrylic awesome i'm guessing you have to hollow sort of tone acrylic yeah <laughs> the, the the tone wood myth tone wood doesn't exist it's all about your electronics i don't, I don't know which camp i'm in with that one i'm not <laughs> it, it's sort of like yes it is about your electronics but you can influence it through the woods you choose um but with with guitars like this, the three strings one, it it really doesn't matter because it's the old sort of the old blues. As long as you've got a nice nice sort of bassy turn out of it, it's all good. I'm, I'm, blues lends itself to the, the the musician more than the instrument anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
But yeah, yeah. like you're saying, it'd be, it'd be fun to see somebody do maybe an acrylic one. Um, a bit of like oil and water inside it. Um, uh, Kirk Hammett from Metallica used to have a Telecaster like that. So as you tilt it, the oil, it's like a lava lamp inside the guitar. <laughs> oh, wow. Very interesting to see somebody do that. Um, oh, I, I, I wonder, did, wonder but... if you could do an actual lava lamp, but powered by the Phantom Power. Yeah, that could... Uh... I mean, it'd be hmm. horrific, but... <laughs> Yeah, it might. So you got me thinking now. Like the, old, uh, the old episode of The Simpsons where Disco Stew has uh, goldfish in his, his platform boots. <laughs> <laughs> Looping back around, you just need um, Lennon and McCartney, Dave Lister's uh, robot goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we come full circle on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dean, Best thank way. you so much for joining us. It's no worries. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah, me on. Yeah. It's been it's been a good chat. Absolute pleasure, and I'm sure we'll have you back on again at some point. And Absolutely. we look forward to seeing the uh, construction of the new workshop. Yeah, definitely. Look forward, this year. Seeing, look forward to seeing what you're going to produce for Maker Central next year. Assuming yeah, that Maker be... Central happens next year, we still I, mm. I haven't heard anything yet. No, same. not that I'm it's... likely to, but. Um, <laughs> To be honest, I'll still make it and take it to the NDC, even if it's not on. Just, yeah, just turn up. Just turn up. I'm sure there will be people vaguely at the NEC around about that time, anyway. So, I think I, I think I think more and more people are Going probably the, choosing uh, to go aspects. to for the social side of it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that yeah, there are plan people. There are people already planning kind of smaller events. I think well, definitely if, for if me they, this year. It was, if it the was social aspect is as fractured as it was this year, then you might need the bike just to get between the various hotels. The hotel bars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was. And then get to, get to the Hilton and be told there's too many people. You got to go. <laughs> yeah. So we go to the boxing and told they don't serve you after eleven. Yeah. No, yeah. thinking about that, I should I say I should have stayed downstairs to be honest because I'd have had a room key, so I could have got the got the rounds in. <laughs> it was one yeah, one drink per room, I think. That was their their way around it as well. Yeah, so I just I just wanted just the uh, the early night without Felix, <laughs> the lie in in the morning. <laughs> Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Sleep is a, a rare resource. And on that note, perhaps yes, we should uh, say goodbye Get to folks. Some and yes. We'll um, yeah, see you all next week. So we're going to do. Yeah. Bye. Thank for you me. again, Dean. Um, no worries. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> <laughs>